Uh, theory on the upcoming left interview. Uh, it's going to be most likely completely wrong. I just want to say this just in case it ends up being true. So Blue would inter will interview left, right? But why would left agree to be interviewed by Blue? A big member of the content creator of Hollow Knight community. I am sure there is a big, a bajillion, billion people wanting to interview with left. Especially after, after the Silk Song delay. And the cro cross sworn demo. So if, if Lef just wanted to have a typical boring interview, why would he go with Blue? You would say this might be because he wants to be more active with the community. But I would disagree. Lef hasn't really interacted with the Hollow Knight community since the 2020 riddles. Or was it 2019? I don't remember. Why would he start interacting with the community now? Is it because Silk Song is nearing release? Am I going insane? Yes. The yes only goes to one of the questions. I want to tell you, you which one, although you can probably guess. He has been interviewed by members of the community in the past without there being any Silk Song news, and that kind of nullifies the whole argument, so you can just ignore. This whole point, please. Thank you. Team Cherry doesn't really like making blog posts. We have learned that. So if they if they wanted to communicate with us, they would do it through Leth. Leth would make then make a tweet. But what if there was something he wants to share with that required too much explanation for a simple tweet? Well, an interview would be perfect place for to explain it. What I think is happening is that Blue was contacted by Leth. Leth asked Blue for help. Blue would act like he was interviewing Leth for the entire interview and he would ask Leth stupid and boring questions. At the very end though, he would drop an important question. Can you give us more insight what happened to the SoCon delay? That's right. The whole interview is just a big disguise to explain the, to the SoCon delay. If Leth tweeted about it, not only would he be unable to fully explain it but he would also get a ton of backlash because i don't know people would find a way to get mad at him but if he reviewed that in an interview everyone would be like oh my god yay and we got big soaks on news from an unexpected interviewer that is so exciting written by anon What are we doing? I'm playing Overwatch. I don't even have Overwatch open. Soak song. Soak song. What the interviews in like 23 minutes? We have enough time to play new mode. Why is it on the second monitor screen? Oh my god. I launched... I was about to say Hall Knight. I launched Overwatch on my first monitor and it pops up my second monitor. What are you...
who is this? Who's Michael Citra? Citra. Okay, but be here for the whole night interview. And Crow's one. And Silk Song. This is so hot in my room. That's because I turned the thermostat to heat. That's probably why. Why is all my second monitor? I don't understand. I have to do all the work of going to options to change to monitor one. Ugh. <laughs> like how fucked up this is. If I'm gonna have dinner and then sleep, I don't know. I just had my anxiety bother me today. Oh, I'm sorry. If you, if you need sleep, please do that. I pulled an all-nighter for this, by the way. I pulled an all-nighter for this all-night interview. I didn't mean to. I did, it just happened. Okay. Hope you're doing well, Dasher. I will after after we do our uh our, our stream. Oh my god, it's nine minutes. Okay, we, we gotta play this fast. Can we play can we play a new mission fast? Can we do that? <laughs> nine minutes? Okay, we found Gambler Dude Speedrunner. Speedrunner now. Give me the fucking sub sub nine fucking dual record. Um, I want to be soldier. I'm already right, soldier. Do you imagine has swords of breath all day? Because I don't even know why. Well, you mentioned anxiety earlier, so that might be play a factor. This looks like the exact same map. Uh, take care of yourself, Dasher. I hope everything's well. Wait, is this the exact same mission, but we get more characters? Are you... There's no way. What the? F <laughs> Ryan, I woke up. He's fine. I need my I need my webcam on. Hey. 
Hey, what's up? Oh shit. Missed me. Yeah, it's literally just the exact same, like, everything. I should, like, have Blue's stream open, ready, at all times. I'm gonna do that. Hold on. Okay, that, it, look, it looks like nothing right now, but like, I... Yeah. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, yeah. It's my face. Oh, it's my face. It's probably the first time you see me, like... I've seen, I was gonna say wearing my face. I'm <laughs> wearing my face. What the fuck? Just a face I wear for the streaming. Wait, if the bombs go onto the tank guy or our real repair guy, does he like take damage? Uh, five minutes before the interview. I bet two bajillion dollars so we're gonna start late. Which means I have more time. The lighting's terrible. Oh my god. Like, like the radiance is out, like outside my windows. What the? There's always like a puff of hair that's sticking out of my head for no reason. And that only happens when I stream. That never happens when I'm like, um, I'm just like normal. When I'm like, God, the fucking universe is, is gonna make sure that everyone knows there's a puff of hair just sticking out of my head. I didn't brush my hair today. I'm gonna let you know that I did that. Wait, what? What? The, it started early. What? Okay. I'm blow. Oh my god. Okay, let me... Turn this off. I don't know if this is like, this is like legal for me to do. Can I just like watch an, a stream for my, on my stream for like entire stream? Can I do that? I 
Let me switch over all night. I'm sure we do this. How do they find this music? I don't like I search on YouTube I find nothing. I just find Hall Night Lo-Fi Hip Hops. That's all I can like that's all I can do. The fuck is this battery? What? It's only up there? How am I? It's not. Mercy is very low. This one, Decker. My queen. Okay, Genji got it apparently. He said he's out as lost as I am. But he got it. He got it. Begins shortly. When? It is 1:30. It is 1:30. Blue. Where's the stream? Where's the interview? You're late. What the fuck are they? my team doing our teammate needs to be revived Can you go revive I can use it against them. That that's pretty smart. Thank you. Thank you. Helpful tip. The chat is ridiculously toxic. People are talking Italian when these rules say you keep chatting in English. What? Is that wait what? Someone's raining with a party of. What? No, no one's. What? You lying to me? No one's doing that. People are saying like, "Where, where was Silk Song?" Like clown emoji, but uh, that's about it. I 
I don't know who that is. Who's 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 Rick from 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 Nello? Are you sorry? The music's getting low. Y'all got banned? What? I saw one deleted message, but that's not in the spot it. <laughs> were you were you there when like that one indie uh, like reward studio or like the, like the indie animation showcase? They want to show up all the indie animation or not the indie animation, but like the indie games. And then the entire chat is. Where's Silk Song? Where's Silk Song? Silk Song? Silk Song? Silk Song? Where's Silk Song? We need Silk Song. We only care about Silk Song. We don't care about any other games. We need Silk Song. We need Silk Song. As the entire chat. <laughs> Like my god. I may or may not have been part of that, but Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm not fine. It was like that with It was kinda like that with uh Nintendo Direct. But not as much because don't. There's a lot more big games than like Hollow Knight Silk Song out there. But there was a good portion saying like where 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 Hollow Knight Silk Song. I completely missed that. You can just move to a safer spot, maybe. It can revive you. What? What did I get killed by? Wait, what? To chat like now. It was in five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. They're very late, but it's five minutes. Cloud emojis. Awesome. Dude, how, how many creator, content creators have to be careful when talking about Silk Song? Like they really do. It's like, yeah. How many viewers are there? Like, around a thousand. Okay, now I want to, like... I want to switch over to Hollow Knight, but I don't know... <laughs> I want to switch over to the game Hollow Knight, but to be in the Hollow Knight section. But I don't know what to do in Hollow Knight. <laughs> it's 
Sorry. Oh, I, I, I know a way to, to input chat fight into gameplay scene. I also showed you the Cloud Emoji event that happened in 2019. You know what I'm talking about. I was... I actually just watched a video of something r related to Etika, if you're talking about him. It was by Parsenkle. He like recently uploaded a video saying like his friend needed help. I mean, I, I watched the whole uh, like documentary of Etika, like part one, two. All like four hours long, or both of them are two hours, but combined four hours long. Echo was such an interesting guy. He was such a. I mean, he was he really just was a great streamer. And I really, I, I'm not I'm not just saying that because he's like, he's dead now. I'm like saying good, like he genuinely, like if he, if he was alive today, I would be saying these same thing, no, like these same things. So, yeah. I think he is one of the greatest streamers to ever, like, live, but... It's really sad. I knew of Etika back in, like, 2019, 2018. I would see clips of him. I never really watched him until, like... Death. I remember. I remember like his, like, uh, I was supposed to say like first time he died. I was like, what? Uh, like when when he died. I remember that being like huge. I remember that. that. I don't know if it's the audience that necessarily made him to do do those things, but they certainly did not help, like at all. Okay, I <laughs> need to dive in such a like, dark subject right before we got into like the exciting like Hall Night interview. <laughs> okay. Now, let me switch over to Hall Night. It's 2,000 viewers? Wait. 1.2 thousand viewers on the stream. Stream hello, again. hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, hope everyone's having a good day today. And it is a very, very special occasion today. Uh, not your regular speedrun stream, for once, you know? I'm actually varying things up a little bit. I know, crazy. Uh, but yeah, hi everyone! Uh, Blue's today, as I... I know Blue is kind of like the... Like the <laughs> get-together, like, me, get... Let me do that I need to turn you down, Blue. I can't... Yeah. Stop talking uh, over me. But yeah, hi everyone. Welcome. He's uh, like the get-together guy stream. in Hollow Knight. Like, let's all get together and, like, do uh, this thing. Matthew Griffin. As he is also known. He makes well, like that's his name. I say uh, other than like Fireborn, he like gets the like sure. the big popular Hall Knight uh, creators and together and like and let's do this a fun event. event and then it becomes a big hit and like uh, uh, everyone loves it. So that's, that's great. what's going on. And we're just about ready to start. So I'm uh I don't know. So uh hold on. 
I'm so unprepared. Everything's a mess. My layouts are. Alright, I need to unmute him. Uh, unmute. No, wait, it's fine. Should I just, like, just not. Uh, where is. You just play Hall Knight. Night. There you go. Hey. Hello. <laughs> We're here well, now. Let me like uh, reset I guess this. Before we start, we should test audio volume again. Just one second. Like in case it works. <laughs> my, my icon's super small. Yeah, it's they're tiny the... for some reason. Uh, I'm sure it's fine though. <laughs> but yeah, how's everyone Hello, everybody. Doing? Hello. Wow. Lots of uh, hellos. Very nice. Yeah. And there's 1.3 thousand people nice. here. Not. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the plan is we're gonna be. Why do I hear Discord notifications? I. I do. Oh need to really? Fix that. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me, everyone. <laughs> Discord pings are on. Oh no. No. Who keeps pinging me? Yeah. 1,400 people. Is that is that Hold not on. is that no, not normal? No, not the timer again. Hold on, you're going. We're going back in the start. Screen. Has to be like the yeah. <laughs> we're going back. We need in the like start. that uh, that reverse record sound. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> exactly. Why do I? So Stop. he has like double the Stop thing. Me. Awesome. Yeah, you should uh, stream yeah, over again shortly. Setting. It I can't wait on. for the stream, guys. It's oh, not it is. on. I didn't, remote, yeah. It says disable. Okay, well, you know what? I'll just do that. I'll have it on. I'll have it on. And I'll just yeah. fix the crop real quick. That's faster. Oh, I see. The crop is slightly Yeah, because the, there's the... a bar at the top. Oh, God, I'm messing it up. Uh, I prepared so much for this. And, of course, it's going to be <laughs> hip scuffed. <laughs> the streamer mode uh, I'm sure you did. button or uh, notification ruined everything. Exactly. <laughs> That's why you should never be a streamer. Someone said they love me. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that, that. That's nice. A bit of uh, parasocial. <laughs> no, I think I think parasocial it's, connection. I suppose. This is a nice compliment. Uh, I don't think it's anything weird. I did this all on in a second channel stream, and it was so it was so good. Of course, it had to. I mean, that like, looks pretty good to me already. Yeah, there we go. And then make the bottom cropped, one slightly but, shorter. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay, I think 50. I'm just gonna. Fifty. That's good, right? That's good. There you go. Okay, it's fixed. All is well in the world. And no more uh, Discord boops. Should and I no send more you some Discord boops. Real quick? We're good. Yes. Again, I'm gonna. All right. I'm gonna play all night. Well, yeah. I'm too uh, I guess first for of this. All, welcome for coming, man. Run. I can't speak. Thank you for coming. Uh, I don't hey, know what I'm gonna uh, do, but like, I I'm, guess I'm not doing P5 runs. If you want to introduce I need to, like, yourself, maybe actually focus for that. But let me lower the music, by the way. So keep it. Why are you should so I, quiet? Should I turn it off? I don't know. I don't think the music was that loud. It was pretty loud. Oh, there was... you go. Okay. Nice. All right. I'm just being me. So yeah, welcome, Leth, uh, to my humble little Twitch stream. Uh, I guess a good start is for you to introduce yeah, yourself. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've been here before, kind of lurking in the. I used to yeah, marking guy. I do in a lot of streams. Just uh, they still call it lurking, right? When you just pop into yeah. channels. Yeah. If you do a anything. single boss. Um, Oh, do single bosses. So I, okay. My name is Matthew Griffin. Uh, a lot of people know me as Les. Just like fuck around and gone home. That sounds like a that's great my plan. Name here on Twitch, um, so it's kind of stuck around. And I work in sort of a publishing marketing role for a number of I was lower this. studios. And we're gonna dive into how that all began and Not kind of my though. journey to that to now from the beginning. Yeah, you uh, you may have heard of some of these oh. studios. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> probably heard of. Uh, yeah, most of the people here now. Probably heard of uh, Team Cherry? No, about my work with Team Cherry. What? 
Oh, never never heard of them personally. Doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> Uh, but, uh... Um, <laughs> the the thing, like, covers, like, video. half of the screen. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I've got another game that's unannounced that... Right, so why am I going up to 5 Uh, actually, a couple games, but... Why are they so quiet? Metroidvania team, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> I don't just look for, uh, Metroidvania games to work with. I've reached out to a, a number of teams who... We're looking into publishing options, some RPGs and uh, a roguelike one, uh, once upon a time, we're looking to a roguelike team. Um, but uh, this uh, this new team is, um, I, I guess I can, well, should I get into that? We'll just say who we can, we can save it, you know, add some suspense. Save it a little bit? Okay. Yeah, we'll save it. Uh, yeah, I got another new game I'm going to be working with, okay. and I'm also... Working on I just need to not bump through it. We're, we're awesome. Yeah, when I have spare time, I'm working on developing. Why are they so quiet, though? Just, uh, doing some coding. Turn them up. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know you're actually... Like, you, you've you worked as... On the actual development side of gaming as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I guess that's a good starting point. So, uh, I guess... the I, We can start from the beginning, honestly. I feel like that's a good okay. approach to things. So... I don't know. Uh, my headphones are at ninety percent. To go into gaming, like how how did this start out? How did Turn that low. how did everything? Yeah, I've got some. They said my voice is low. Can Let you me turn me up? Bit. Oh no! Okay, now they're okay. Turn it up. Yeah. Uh. So. We snot. Yeah, I, I started sort of delving into um, programming at it. Well, you know, when you're before programming. <laughs> was really an option. I grew up in a small town in like uh, central the valley in California. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't really near near um I forgot the and, interviewer uh, like asks like actually asks really about the person's life, life that they're interviewing like and not <laughs> what the viewers want. And so I was kind of like I'm going to have to learn <laughs> program, you know, forgot about that part. You want to try and get your foot in the door somehow. And I think most people's route to get into game development back then would have been to become like a quality assurance tester of some kind, like move to the Bay Area or LA, get yeah, in a, get an entry level job, and then kind of move up over the years. Mm -hmm. But I, since I didn't live in those turn, areas, turn I figured down. I'll, I'll learn programming and then apply for a programming job and then move, you know, to a company. Mm. So you already decided that that was like was gonna be what you do i just was kind of like this this should be i could probably do i enjoyed game design you know doing board games and whatnot before i did program but then i kind of just started learning programming that's just um, uh and thinking that i could you know get into a company through like an entry-level programmer position yeah that's 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 interesting uh i guess like was this um a self taught thing or did you did you take courses or like how how did you approach that i suppose yeah so first i started uh learning on uh, something i have men's claws realized system <laughs> <laughs> it was like when i was a young lad uh, yeah. all of this is 17. ancient to me you know stuff before i was oh, yeah. born you know that's it was a very long time that's ago. true Blue, blue's like 17. it's kind of crazy mm -hmm. um so I started learning about programming through that kind of, I guess you could call it self-taught, and yeah. then start experimenting with uh, Q Basic, which is probably the young folks here are gonna be like, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> um, uh, and then when I graduated from high school, I started taking programming classes, and that's when like C plus plus started coming around. It, at least where like I was that. living, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was new to where I was at, and C plus plus is kind of like now C sharp. It's like a derivative of C plus plus. Is probably the more common standard language in yeah. uh, game development. So it's like the precursor to C sharp, um, uh, and I, uh, yeah, I got like a programming 
associate's two like a two-year programming degree um at the college i was at and then i discovered uh game maker and game maker kind of lets it you can kind of program in it if you want but it also lets you do some things really easily like drag and drop it lets mm -hmm. you so it's like a sprites. more accessible approachable way yeah to oh yeah yes make like games. it's especially if because if you're programming in like c sharp you have to program mm -hmm. you have to program just rendering images to the screen <laughs> yeah makes sense like and it's complicated it's like you have to you have to create an image and then when the next image is going to be created you have to like display that and then and then remove the previous one that was created and then you mm -hmm. keep refreshing that every frame and if you don't do it right you get uh screen tearing or whatever you know, I want and i couldn't even figure out how to do that <laughs> it was on me so i was it was like a godsend for me to discover game i, mean, I don't really have anything to, to add to like the just programming you, side for you it makes it easier for I didn't know he did that. Around the screen when you press left or right. Yeah, he did so the coding. From there, you know. It's cool, I guess. Games at a different, uh, it just I took, took a program. coding class yeah, once. Because uh, it seems so complicated. Like, I'm not a game developer, and it's always mm -hmm. like understanding programming is always one of those things that I've, I've wanted to learn, but I don't. I, I've realized and kind of accepted that I don't have the patience or motivation <laughs> to ever do it so uh, like he has the patience and motivation to speed run hollow night okay into that because it, it feels like such 112 percent uh, okay to approach unless you're like doing it in a formal regard uh, mm -hmm. but i guess if sure. you're interested in something it, it that really guides you to learn <laughs> about things you know yeah yeah absolutely like you you should try to work try to work out what your passion is if you want to get into game development and you kind of like think about what you would look what you would you're find. coding very interested in programming in the game development interesting you have anything to add in on in game development and kind of just uh this you know, interview work on fine-tuning that skill you know getting getting it to a level where you can start making a, a game or work with someone to make a game yeah so as a as a programmer i i knew like quickly, share the class you quickly figure out that you can't make a game without art you know yeah so it's like, but an artist can't make a game without a programmer. So that's like, <laughs> you need to, uh, you have to team to, up with someone. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna have to team up with someone and a good way to do that for people starting out would be like, for me, it was the game maker forums, mm -hmm. people posting stuff they're working on all the time. And you reach out to them and be like, do you want to collaborate on this motion to do like anything was research and seeing someone also is interested in being the, that the far, which is like a competition to make. Oh yeah. But like a, the look at any game Team Cherry started ever too as well right like, like that has like programming yeah. approach to like they um, uh, they got that far like getting together and making things right these games and you can be you can be that too them. like uh, yeah yeah like the met, the, like meet, meet code people. god of war and i don't know did you ever do any game you... no i didn't um well i did one i don't know what any of that means like c hashtag c c plus i don't know i don't know what it means what was the thing it was the theme was only one, mm -hmm. is what the theme was. Nice and vague. And I don't remember how we approached it. I remember we had like a platformer shooter thing. And we, and you had to, you had like choices to make uh -huh. after each Oh one. yeah, I know they're programming languages, but like, you pick one I don't know how the difference between them. <laughs> it's like, it was kind of cheese, cheesy way to approach the idea of only one. I mean, yeah, the winner but... back then was uh, Titan Quest. Titan Souls? Titan Souls won that one. Oh, I've heard about that game from Scurry, but I don't actually know what it is. Uh, I do think they've yeah, played yeah. it, though. I might be wrong. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's nice, right? Because it's, it's just like the goal is to make something, even if it's not good, as long as you... Like, the, mm -hmm. the big part of it is, like, getting together and, like, trying to make something. That gets you a lot of experience and... Yeah. It's usually it, a pretty short time lot. frame, too, right? So you, yeah, you it's have usually to... just like a, a weekend. Uh-huh. Yeah. I find it mesmerizing that people can put together something that works in a weekend. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Difference between yeah, programming languages is usually the type of synax. And then 
Like syntax, the main purpose of I, start over I've it. been up for it's so long. I can't, I can't yeah, speak. I can't it's read. So I can't speak. To try and just try to get that done in a weekend. It's a lot of pressure, but you you learn a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, so let's see. So uh, game yeah, maker for a number of years. I was so. working in game maker. I was so everything's always compiled to the same way on like core online. down to machine code. Extended Programming in zeros and ones is a really like human a, or music feats will do. Mm -hmm. I made this library to make it really easy, theoretically, <laughs> for you to add. So it's like like different languages of code. You have, you have like different little languages. Maker magazine and like this one's English. This one's French. So like, this one's Japanese. Um, it's like that, but like you know, the coding. Free. People started using it to make MMOs and things that probably they shouldn't try to make because <laughs> they're just gin <laughs> ginormous projects ideas yeah. but um that was kind of like doing that helped me get a lot of you know a lot of people started reaching out being like hey you want to work on something together and formed i formed uh i teamed up with uh, this guy jason gordy who mm -hmm. i'm still friends with um yeah okay to so yeah, I, got, I got down I, I know and we started a i know, I know coding title uh called the online adventure and then just after working on it for like a year, kind of was like, oh, this is this is too big for two people to do. I think we had like a team of three or four, but it was still like this massive idea. So we thought we'd trim it down and make it smaller. Um, is that about Hall Knight right now? Wanderless Rebirth, which ended up still taking us like four or five years to, to finish working on it in our spare time, going to college, working, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. You got these life things you gotta take care of, and then you work on the game when you can. Um, and the Wanderlust game we launched. Some things talk about other games. Uh, I think that was just after Minecraft started taking off. Minecraft. Okay, this is yeah, definitely we before Hollow Knight. That's a whole other discussion about Minecraft kind of setting the stage for indies to become a thing. Mm -hmm. Like with how big it was, it was like yeah. suddenly everyone was like, "All oh, these indie games are cool." Like, Minecraft is an indie game? I feel like the indie, indie scene has definitely gotten a lot more Wait, what? Uh, awareness from like the mainstream gaming <sighs> player well, I never knew that. in recent years. And especially mm -hmm. like the last 10 years or so. Not that I remember anything before then. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, indies are for me like a staple. I buy more indie games than I do what yeah. you might call AAA. Mm -hmm. I guess people call them AAA games, the, the big big studios. I'll buy one of those a year, maybe. Yeah. So but what? What's like a a double A and a, it's, it's a really single nice. A it's, it, game? I, in my experience, why is it always? I only I only ever hear triple A. By small, like it's like that's it's obviously the not implication a of like between double A and, and, and singular like a, a. That you need to pit them together, and like there are, there are good triple A games. <laughs> there are problems with the triple A games industry. And there's also problems with indie developments that, you know, are a bit different. Uh, but mm -hmm. in general, the, the thing that I like about indies is that, you know, when you have such a small team and stuff, as you, as you said, you, you get together with a few people and you have this vision. And I think the result tends to lean a bit more towards art, you know, because games yeah. as an art form, you know, you make something out of passion. And I, I think that's really cool. It's like a another tool of self-expression That's give me a much. lot it's really exciting i think we're i think we're seeing that with movies now too like mm -hmm. if you were to i'm not big into mo that big into movies but same dude watch, why are all gamers like not into movies you're gonna Sorry. get stuff that's sort of more true to the art than the big rather game than watch sort of I'm like, uh, like safer, watch yeah big money movies where they've got tons of money into it and they can't afford to be <laughs> too nerdy for movies to take risks anymore <laughs> they yeah have to do absolutely. something they think will guarantee them their money back so it's kind of like the same problem like both in two different industries maybe that's boiling it down to <laughs> uh no point, you don't. but i'm sure it's yeah all much more nuanced <laughs> that's, than that yeah. but certainly indie independent stuff nice joke there but take uh, more risks <laughs> and kind of just do something that they want to do without <laughs> worrying about uh satisfying investors generally. yeah for sure their, and their speaking of indies i guess that brings me to 
kind of the next chapter in your your little story here. Also, before before I continue, oh, yeah. uh, I feel like I, I should give some sense of structure on uh, kind of what we're talking about here, so people can ask questions that are relevant. Silk song, silk song, silk song, silk song, silk song. So, uh, okay. first of all, we're, we're starting out talking about silk song history and how we started out. So uh, then we're going to talk a bit about Hollow Knight, uh, which I have a lot of questions about because I'm a big Hollow Knight fan. You know, so the whole, not surprising, but you know. Uh, and then we're going to move on to Crowsworn, so so? which is the other really cool game that you are currently promoting, working with, <laughs> I suppose. What about so so? Um, and I have some questions about that. And then last, uh, so so? I guess we'll talk about a third game that some people may have heard of and may be excited to hear something about, I suppose. I'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> Very sneaky, this guy. Yeah, you may, you sure. may have heard of this character for Nick. Silk Song! Uh, but yeah, I guess returning to what I was saying before, uh, bringing you to uh, the next point, I guess, uh, on the on the topic of successful indie games, you worked on the original mm. Risk of Rain, which Born. I didn't really know until like a few weeks. What? Ago. You worked on uh, Risk of Rain yeah, one? I did. Um, after we released Wanderlust Rebirth, we started working on Wanderlust Adventures, and these were Wanderlust games were like they were on Game Maker games that had online playability, like cooperative playable function to them. What? So when, I, when the I found out the what are you talking Risk about? of Rain guys were hoping to add online co-op to their He's game. He's like one hit away um, from dying. That's unfortunate. Uh, a meeting was arranged. I had a chat with them and thought that we could probably put it together pretty quickly, at least get a sense if it'd be doable, because at the time they were only a few months away from releasing their game. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of like a question of, can we even retrofit the engine to uh, allow for online functionality and we just kind of worked um, worked on it for a month or so and I had it that. pretty much working then from there there were some design questions like uh, how do you join games you know the multiplayer balancing in and out. stuff like that yeah balancing yeah exactly there, there were other sort of questions how, you know when you collect XP is it split between everyone is it how's the money get split etc but um, those are just kind of like the fun little design puzzles you got to work out. And then, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I love playing Risk of Rain co-op. So I've never yeah, played, I only play Risk of Rain 2. And like, that. And then, I mean, Risk, I Ray, Risk of Rain 1 just seems oh, like a completely different game. The game too. Mm -hmm. what, it's, it's, I knew about Game Maker, I had a lot of experience with Game Maker and what problems, where, where Game Maker struggles and help get the game running at a faster frame rate, which is important for an online game to have people with consistent frame rates between them. Mm -hmm, for so, sure. Um, so that was the first step, was just helping them there you tune up the frame rate. So I'm doing Ray, I don't really... Frames boost Whoops. ...to the game. Wow, look at that. that those are some yeah. results. I don't really need... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're talking in like yeah. 20... Wait. What year was this? 2013. Yeah. 2013. That point, you know... So, 30 FPS was the base. That's pretty cool heart. Pretty standard. Yeah, they yeah. wanted 60. So I was like, oh boy. Um, okay. You know, I'll... Uh, and to them, I think their computers ran it fine, but I, I would run it on my laptop and I'd be like, oh, it's struggling. Mm -hmm. And so I worked basically... That's true. I can overcharm. 60 frames per second. That's how I know I um, moved it. But then it's... That was pretty... I mean, just without going into many details, Game Maker rendered, renders text very slow like on-screen text and so we just had to kind of target Microphone. Um, why not how much text was popping up on the screen give people op also give people options to lower you know change how the text is rendered or not even show damage numbers at all etc to let them have better performance yeah for sure um, um so yeah and then also we talked about the difficulty names the drizzle rainstorm and monsoon i i pushed them to not use easy normal and hard and so he he was uh, cool like he was the guy they make difficulties 
We can like to just get so uh, rancing and, and from like Mike when you get the, the later difficulties. Risk of rain. You know, risk of rain too. For the second Wanderlust game. All that sound. Uh, risk of rain. I haven't played Risk of Rain one, but he did the soundtrack for Risk of Rain two. He did it for two. And also. that yeah. soundtrack is so good. It rules. It goes so. <laughs> oh hard. yeah. <laughs> he was great to work with, and he liked progressive rock. In which I saw someone ask what what kind of music I like. I like progressive metal. Um. And, what is uh, it with so guys named Chris doing good game soundtracks? <laughs> yeah, we got another Chris in the house. <laughs> I play, I play progressive metal. I'm a guitarist. I'm oh wow, really? Also. Yeah, I play, I play heavy oh metal. Oh my guitar, god, dude, just had to... all that good stuff. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Not so much recently. I've been really busy with. Work. So this guy's uh, way more than a, just a PR marketing guy for all night. But there, there's some clips of some songs I wrote out there that have shared with the community in the off-topic uh, areas. That's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, let's see. So um, I'm gonna transition here from Risk of Rain to marketing. Yeah, that, that was what I was gonna here. ask. So the okay, the, right. the big thing is, right, I guess that was kind of your journey as a like a developer in Coder. terms of programming sure. and coding and all that stuff, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But that's not what we know you as in the Just current the day. One. In no, the yeah, no one knows that. Communities. <laughs> this I mean, is like, yeah. I had to dig to find out that you worked on Risk of Rain. I mean, he's the one. Uh, well, that's I didn't cool. really have to dig. I just didn't know it <laughs> until now. Um, but I guess the the main one that we know, even before Hollow Knight, and I guess that's how most of us know Dude, why do I have so much damage? Wait. Uh, but you worked on Stardew Valley, right? With Eric Barone? Uh... Yes, As, and that was, was oh, he's God. First, oh, yeah, we know that first um, venture as like a PR and marketing stuff. Um, first, yeah, probably you could probably say that like it was I helped. Uh, I mean, obviously, I I kind of. Well, Risk of Rain's launch um, taught me a kind of. Oh, this is this is original NOS. on how I approached marketing. Because it, it it took off on Twitch, mm -hmm. and so I started focusing on Twitch and content. I mean, they didn't call them content creators back then. That was kind of it wasn't a term back then. But the streamers, you know. Yeah. Streamers and YouTubers. Oh my God! Like you I mentioned saw them me. Playing. <laughs> yeah. That's me. You mentioned me. Um. <coughs> yeah. Someone commented about, "Do you like Opeth?" So I did a little, you know, little little. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but. Basically, um, Risk of Rain uh, was taken off on with people playing on Twitch. So I started being like, "Hey, I did the co-op for the game. Can I, you know, you, you mind if I play with you and talk to you about the game?" And just kind of. <laughs> hey, like, I learn. made well, this game. Can the, I play with you? Did I play your functionality for Stardew as well? No, no. This was Risk of Rain. This this was before Stardew. Oh, um, okay. Sorry, I, I was started... I was not keeping up. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm, Dropping back a couple of years here before Stardew. Yeah. Um, so I just learned about uh, sort of approaching marketing in a more grassroots, sort of like straight to the fans way through streaming and the streaming community and YouTube back in 2013, late 2013. And I think um, part of a big motivating factor for that was because I was very frustrated with like. Uh, I don't know. The regular old media just doesn't pay attention to you. That was unfair. Unless you have a hit. Yeah. Um. So, oh, I just got a, I just got a message to distract you. <laughs> Put your phone down. Put your phone away. I, I'm getting my Discord boops still. But <laughs> oh, that was so, me. <laughs> um, oh, was you? <laughs> yeah. Uh. So um. Essentially. Um. I was like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a means to reach fans that doesn't rely on Actually. sort of the big corporate traditional media types to cover mm -hmm. my game. Or, or when you're indie, you don't have like an advertising budget. So, right. Uh, yeah. I have to come up with a, a solution to get my game out there that doesn't require a big amount of money spend or okay. getting articles and interviews done on your titles and so my solution was get kind of just go become a part of the twitch 
community and made lots of friends and um, I feel like it's kind of like Abwa I'm doing are now kind of playing catch up on like this. everyone that raid I like so uh, I, but I think like they're cool I'm just hang out cool with them idea and I'll uh, give a follow and I'll and come back to your streams that sort of pushed me into once once one of those adventures launched it didn't perform like we hoped um, it's all part of my plan. So I was like, well, now's the time for me to shift gears into working How on do the I have hiccups? side of things. Uh, because what? it's like when you program a game for like three or four years and then it doesn't perform. <laughs> yeah. Like you're over. It's, like it's, it, it's brutal. Um, so it's kind of like, well, uh, I'm going to move over to the publishing side. And it's, it's kind of where I wanted to be anyhow. Was the programming was supposed to be the foot in the door to get into the production side. Um, and I was hired by a publishing company who happened to be publishing Stardew Valley. So then, I, yeah, I started working with uh, Eric Barone. Um, and that game turned out to be a pretty big success. <laughs> you yeah. <could> say. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, the game... I mean, I think I agree. I did a good job <laughs> with, mar with, with marketing and launching the. <laughs> of course, I agree. But what but, I do when I, mean, I have hiccups, I a, just hold my breath for as case, long as I can. Like a generational until it goes title. away. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, or until you know. I pass out. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's. In hindsight, I'm kind of like, wow, I can't believe. Uh, you know, I got to work on Risk of Rain, which was a huge indie hit, and then Sardi Valley. Same, yeah. Um, okay. My mom cannot do that for some reason. This huge, I, I don't know how. And uh, you know, very grateful for. She would like, put water in her mouth, like close, like close, really plug her nose, was, like, wait yeah, her yeah. head back. Wait, like, Mark why you have to do all of that? Was just, <laughs> just, hold, just hold, just hold your breath. Talking with them, uh, Eric. Prior to launch, <laughs> like, just talk about you know what he got left to do, and kind of just be like, well, you know. I would too much on this or that first then this next you know kind of prioritize the to-do list a little bit get some testing done oh, yeah it helps Had like testers who put a lot of hours too much into the game helped uh tune things up too much you gotta launch, do and then at launch just blast keys out to all the people i know on twitch and youtube mm -hmm. you know hundreds of keys and i think there's an interview with uh um, dangerous Eric practice right it's still from that time on my twitch channel like Maybe might still be there. I'm not sure. Uh, of us just kind of talking about. Yeah. So even even launch. before like the the big success we know you from, which is Hollow Knight, you've been yeah. around and you've you've been involved in oh, a yeah. lot, of, lot of successful and, and cool things. So in other words, uh, the Leth effect is real. Every game you touch <laughs> does really well and is really good. So we we're we're in for a good one with Crow Sworn and Silk Song and anything else you're working on. That's true though. Yeah, I like Crow the Sworn Thanos meme that was going around game. for a minute. Where it hasn't like even a, come out yet, but it's a good game. I worked on and uh, my face was on Thanos' face. <laughs> like that, like it was the, all the one of the, the mods. One of my mods in the chat said the Midas touch for indie games. <laughs> <laughs> That's very flattering. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the 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 games to me. Song, 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 uh, this song. You know the games. Stop. Because I've worked Stop on it. other games that weren't as huge you know it's not the, the Midas touches and <laughs> is that's not real but uh, mm. but really it comes down to the quality of the game like there's kind of this thing that publishers abuse and they they'll I, you do talk about two times oh, yeah, in a row I, we, we don't worked on we this. don't do that mm -hmm. huge hit so come publish it with us because your game will be a huge hit and it's just not the case <laughs> right it's not dependent on the publisher it's dependent on the game so you can get a publisher that, yeah, sure, launched a huge game, but then have other games that they put out that no one's even heard of. Yeah. So. I mean, not not that, you know, is fame and quality is necessarily equal, but yeah, I get what yeah. you're trying to say. Right. Um, yeah, so I guess th that's, that's a little bit of an insight on your, I guess, your career before Hollow Knight. Um, but oh yeah, this this is about the time I, just before I. I mean, it's my first time like Eric hearing this guy. Valley out into you know Sorry. the the world. Um, um, I talked with Ari on the phone. What was this around 2015? It was 
2016, January 2016. I don't have Marker Pride. Before Stardew Valley launched. I forgot so to turn. They, they knew you from. I turn. Uh, I I took off Marker store. Pride. How did they? Well, I I, I reached out to them because they had a trailer. They had the Ferocious Foes trailer go out and uh -huh. get a lot of eyes on it, and I think they were looking into publishing, or at least the response, you know, got publisher interest for them. And so I reached out to them on behalf of the publisher I was working for and said, hey, if you guys are looking for a publisher, you know, consider us and uh, you'll be working with me. And uh, I'm about to launch this game, Stardew Valley, and then after that, you know, we can talk. Um, and Stardew Valley took off, uh, but I reached out again and Team Cherry, uh, is, it was, uh, I, think, I think first I talked with Ari, Ari and then the next time around was ever, ever you know, Ari and William. But they were kinda like, Yeah, we're thinking we wanna stay self we wanna stay independent if possible, you know. Mm -hmm. Like maybe not go with the publisher and so then I offered to just join the team as just sort of an agent to, that you know could join the team and handle those duties. And uh, yeah, they, they thought it was a good idea too. So they joined joined forces and like the summer of 2016. Yeah, I'd say they made a pretty good judgment, I think. Wow, uh, thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I agree. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of advantages. The interview's to, going on! To hiring some, like, Can't you, sleep. Like I said, they get to stay independent. They don't have to put I uh, need to turn on Marker Pride. Their name on top of their title. Uh-huh, yeah. And then they have a guy who's really active and just with the team, like a, a team member who just will handle... All the things, all those like uh, orbiting tasks or that are floating around game development. Apparently, this guy uh, Man, made Stardew Valley and code or add Risk of Rain one. But we've got this thing we got. That is not code. true, and that was a lie. But he did do like he played a part in Risk of Rain and like localization or whatnot. Stardew Valley. And so like you handled all, all of the, that like like did the marketing for that. Things, I think right? or a lot of it. Yeah, if it's not right. I, it's all development, but it's kind of like what we would kind of, you know, when people think about development, they think about the creative side of the program, yeah. the art, music, sound effects. So, yeah, it's everything else. It's kind of, you know, handling meetings, reading contracts, uh, bringing new third party, you know, business opportunities to the team or whatnot. Um, if, let's say, they want to port the game to mobile, I mean, it's not Team Cherry, <laughs> but let's just say, theoretically, a company I'm working it with has like, well we want a mobile game then I'll, I gotta go find them a team Hall Knight's on mobile it, negotiate with them you know you can play it so on your Hall mobile device said, like let's say the switch port that was like you right. getting in contact with them or uh, say fan gamer for example to... uh, yeah if you're collaborating with them with new merch and stuff like that well when a game's kind of taken off you have the luxury of having a lot of sort of businesses come to you yeah and then it's just a matter of sort of <laughs> feeling them out and give, having a call and seeing which you think is the right fit. And, yeah. And uh, making that call. Uh, yeah. So it's a little bit easier. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. So I guess now that kind of brings into the, the, the Hollow Knight proper, you know, as a topic. Uh, so now, now people know All a right. little bit of like what you do or what you did with Hollow Knight. I guess you kind of still do. You know, there's a lot of things that with like Hollow Knight as its own game. I don't know. Uh, I said that <laughs> even like with like aside from whatever Team Cherry's working on now. Uh, like there's a lot of that's something that I particularly agree on. on, on in, right? Hollow Knight marketing. Oh, yeah. And I've I uh, yeah, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I'm kind of like surprised. Uh, that there aren't more folks kind of taking the direction that I've that I have uh, with sort of becoming like a publishing agent I like to mm -hmm. try to call it you know, like someone who will join a team instead of being a publishing company that bring you know you've got publishers out there um, and it probably is more important God. now than it was during the green light years to have a publisher again mm -hmm. Or at least someone that can handle that kind of thing for you, or has the contacts, etc. But I'm just surprised that there aren't more uh, folks coming out of, say, like a publishing company, like, hey, handle 
publishing a couple titles for a company and then just after they've learned all those skills and made those contacts, just move away mm -hmm. from that and go sort of go rogue. <laughs> go like uh, do what I'm doing. Yeah, and f for con when you say the green light days, you mean like the yeah. Steam green light system, correct? Yeah, right. Yeah, so Steam had a Steam had sort of a a way for indies to get onto Steam, which was like getting it was kind of like a mixture of Kickstarter mm -hmm. um, and just being on Steam or getting getting votes for people kind of pledging that they would buy the game or. Yeah, so you couldn't it. just put your game on Steam, is what no. he's saying, basically. There was, like, you a, can now. a process. You can't? Yeah, now no. you can, right. but, like, back then. Why can't... Uh, but, see, I felt like the green light sort of situation encouraged indie developers to sort of get into the publishing side and marketing uh -huh. side. Like, it kind of forced you to go out and get votes. And from I'm up off the screen! Game. I'm it's off the screen. Why is it not disappearing? Finding success as an indie game. Uh, an indie team and now since you can i think you just uh pay a fee and you get on developers can skip is it quiet for you guys it's like it makes it so it's kinda like kind of quiet for someone to help on you. obs mm -hmm. since you're not doing the sort of word of mouth advertising or marketing anymore you need someone to help with that again and now there's a lot of games on there so you need it <laughs> so yeah you also need it for you got to stand out you need someone to help you stand out so that's again why i'm just surprised there aren't more folks kind of moving out of like let's say some big wig at uh microsoft in the marketing department and then just leaves microsoft and goes i'm gonna be a independent uh, publishing guy you know but maybe it's risky too risky for them i don't know yeah i guess that gives you a bit of security like in terms of yeah you get the having security stable with employment the and stuff mm -hmm. um but yeah in i guess we'll we'll go back a little bit now to to Hollow Knight during, because you, you joined okay. in 2016, right? During the the, yeah. the final phase. Because Hollow Knight, for those that don't know, released in, well, most of you probably know, but Hollow Knight released in <laughs> February of 2017, right? So during right, that I last that. year, uh, you joined the team and... Uh, yeah, just what, six to eight months prior, I guess. Yeah, about mm -hmm. eight months prior to... to yeah, that. so Hollow Knight's release, I guess, and that, that final bit of process, was it like... Was it especially stressful? Like, how, how was the, uh, how, how did it feel to, like, or in general, I suppose, not in a, I mean, I'm curious mm -hmm. about Hollow Knight, but, uh, like, how, how did it feel to release the game? How does, how does it feel to, like, put all that hard work into, into the world and just, like, hope that it probably resonates <laughs> with Good. Well, it's a loaded question, I know, but. I think. Just generally launching a game is going to be a tense, exciting, I mean, there's all, everything, all those feelings, you know, it's like having mm -hmm. a baby. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, there's tons of work and effort and responsibility all wrapped into this one event. And just, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's tense. Um, the funny thing is, is, and there's an interview with Ari and I from Tokyo Game Show in like 2018 mm -hmm. was that 20 or 2017 because it was just before grim troop i shouldn't send it uh, i don't launched. want to do a send it but it was no. kind of like they're like well were you up all night or what were you doing at launch and Ari's is like i was sleeping <laughs> 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 because we launched at uh i'm assuming the afternoon well, time i was not that big when we first launched that you know Pacific mm -hmm. like at all standard time not so until like 2018 like, uh, or like 2019 though, to totally get like Pacific Standard Time and for them, like much attraction in the morning, so they were just asleep. So I, I had the responsibility of hitting the go live button, Ooh. you know, and launching the game. But in hindsight, it's like wow, I, I clicked the button for a huge title. But at the time, it, it, you know, it wasn't a huge title yet. It yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was just a lot of years of work. It's still like yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't have that context I just, either. You know, mm -hmm. I'd launched a couple of games before, so it wasn't like this was new. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but, yeah, we just, um, I did uh, some live streaming before the launch of the game and giving out copies of the game, I think. But, of course, didn't send those copies out until the game was out mm -hmm. and sent the keys out to everybody. But that's just how I normally handle games is, hand, is like, then key you know get key requests from 
all the streamers that want a key, then verify they actually have a ch a, you know, a real channel. Because you get requests <laughs> from you get requests from people from a YouTube channel that has like zero subscribers and stuff too. Like mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like someone's trying to get a free game. <laughs> so it's like okay, I'm not sending one there. Isn't that the whole point uh, of you watching like stream and then like asking for a key? Just, um, going and watching. What? <laughs> play introducing yourself in the chat you know i worked on the game i did this or that mm -hmm. um, Ooh, good question you play. I, good question in oh, chat. Yeah? um you don't live in australia do you like no. how how is it is it an additional and i guess relevant to to crossworn and mongoose rodeo as well um mm -hmm. you don't live in they are in canada right yeah yeah, yeah. Is, is it difficult to like organize like the work if you're trying to communicate like is that like is that something that you had you have to like create a system to efficiently communicate or like no, has that well, ever been it, a challenge is what i'm wondering yeah it it was for when i was working with the pathway team there they were in germany and that mm -hmm. was a, that was tricky because just that the way the hours lined up with me out at the time i was in california it was just difficult to have us, you know, I'd, I'd be up till like uh, really late, you know, midnight or something in order to talk to them in the early morning or something like that. Mm -hmm. So then it was just kind of like, oh, this day I'm free in the morning. Are you free in the late evening? And a big, yeah. So I just, I've kind of moved my whole life schedule to <laughs> be up in the e late evening, you know, past midnight. And Team Cherry. Uh, it's kind of like me, like my late evening, you know, after except dinner. I don't have a job. I'm Hours, not publishing uh, like big Mongoose games. Rodeo is just an hour ahead of me, so I talk to them almost all day. Oh yeah, I guess for, for them, time Mongoose zone isn't really a problem. It's yeah. more like distance. Uh, in case. As far as like, as far as me being in the U.S. and the teams I work with being international, I I'm think it, it has been an advantage in a lot of ways, like when dealing with other businesses that are largely based in the United States um, with a few exceptions mm -hmm. like it's easier for me to hop on a quick call or get something delivered or signed or whatever uh, during my day versus having to wait for someone in Europe or Australia to wake up and deal with the thing when everyone else is already off work you know because yeah because I work all day, uh, you know, I'm available all day every day uh, to handle things. But most people with who we work with, they don't want to be working after 5, you know, <laughs> p.m. Yeah. their local time. So um, it's it's definitely solved a lot of when issues with logistics. Spikes. And if mm -hmm. it's, uh, Makes it sense. Just, you know, it's helped there. Um, and I can also travel, you know, before COVID, I was flying a lot to local things in the u.s like the paxes and twitch cons mm -hmm. and stuff so having someone in the u.s that it's like more affordable for them to just quickly fly over to this event and talk and represent the team is almost also super useful yeah for sure. back makes sense pretty soon too i guess uh it's one of those things where i get for for the um, the the workload that you have in terms of with with hollow knight uh a lot of it like did you always because you're far like far away and the time zone difference uh i guess there the, the, there are ways to fix that without having to do like meetings where one of you has has to be in the middle of the night like you, there are other ways mm -hmm. to communicate like you can just send messages yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah that's yeah we have, live in the new oh, era with the that. discord yeah. and you know all these instant messaging we you know we started out on skype and we eventually <laughs> moved off of skype <laughs> I remember Skype. I'm not that. Yeah, uh, I Skype know. Is still a thing. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Apparently. apparently. <laughs> I use Skype for a little some, bit. Uh, some like... of these, uh, some of these companies I'm that are really old, Discord you know, big companies. They got, they got folks still using Skype. I, I finally got rid of it. I think earlier this year. It's like I'm not talking to anybody else on Skype. Everyone's moved <laughs> on to other stuff. Mm -hmm. So don't need it anymore. Yeah. And I guess after Hollow Knight's release, like how how was the how was that? How was the 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 original reception? I suppose how was your experience? Oh, so with that? the reception was really good, um, but 
we launched uh, like about 10 days or something before the Switch <laughs> launched and Zelda <laughs> yeah. came out. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was something I was hoping to avoid. What was the first? What was the Zelda game? Breath of the Wild, right? Breath of the Wild, yeah. There was um, a so lot. But a big part of my of marketing hit games in 2017. Is eight. Streamers. It was just an so unfortunate year for Hall Knight to publish that, that there. Is gonna eat up a week of streamers' time or more. You know, it feels yeah, like everyone sure. is looking at the big so games. I did not want to launch. At this I mean, is I not it. it. Was, uh, 14 like at all. days prior to Breath of the Wild, maybe it, mm -hmm. around that. Um, but fortunately, people came back to Hollow Knight after they got their Breath of the Wild fix, and the game picked up, had a nice long tail in terms of sales, and um, then because of that, because of how well it was selling leading into summer, we had an opportunity to be featured in the summer sale on, mm -hmm. on Steam. So we took that. And Absolute I think that was pretty much the catalyst for everyone jumping in and just finding out about the game and talking about it. It was a huge boost for the game. And now here we are, <laughs> six years later. Yeah. Oh my here God. we are. Yeah. Uh, set, wait, six years? Yeah, six years. Yeah. Six and a half almost. Because it was February, yeah. right? Yeah, about six and a half years. So my... So Hollow Knight before um, before Hollow Knight, I hadn't really dealt with localizing, mm -hmm. like getting the game games translated. So that was my first sort of foray into that realm. And localization, that whole industry is just there's there's potholes everywhere. Yeah, like you can really step in it. <laughs> so that was a big challenge. Um, mm -hmm. And what do you mean by that? we eventually went gravitated towards I don't know what fans like, who wanted to mean. I don't know what get means into, for that. who fan like fans of the game who reached out to us who wanted to get into sort of lo the localizing industry and wanting to work on the game and we we went sort of I mean it's almost indie <laughs> the way mm -hmm. we approached it but we went that route more so than just like going with we started trying to go with the company and then had some mixed results and so it was like oh my god this is going to be a headache let's just go with people who like are fans of the game their hearts in the right place they understand the source material and they're going to do a, probably a better job up front with maybe some minor mistakes or take a little bit longer yeah but it's one of those things that you team. need to have a lot of like faith in right because you can't really you yeah. can't really uh like verify verify right. yeah know the other language <laughs> what yeah so we before that summer sale, I was working hard to get like four or five more languages in, I think, and we pulled it off like the day before the summer mm -hmm. sale began. We like launched a bunch of new languages, uh, German and Spanish and I think Korean maybe. Um, and then, yeah, then you just kind of look at the forums and see what people's responses are to the quality of the translation. And we, I mean, it was, it was pretty painless. As a, a speedrunner. Uh, the Chinese mm -hmm. translation is great because <laughs> it lets us save oh, a yeah, bunch of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good job with really that interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah, I, I learned about that with watching speedrunners that you guys mm -hmm. switch to Chinese because it's the characters less characters. And oh yeah, dialogue quicker. Yeah, I, really I, I was confused like why is talking about Chinese. I guess now that I've brought up that topic, that's one of the big. I was like, oh that, yeah. I guess a, a wider topic that <laughs> I, I wanted to kind of ask about in regards to Hollow Knight, like. Uh, I guess in general, first of all, how how active are you guys at Team Cherry behind the scenes in regards with keeping up with the community or stuff like that? And has that changed a lot over time? Uh, mm. Yeah, I would say uh, we're well. I think I'm probably the most active. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm the most active in terms of uh, keeping up with what folks are saying. Yeah. Something that, it's something I want to know, you know, to kind of gauge what the fan sentiment is at any given time. Uh, and then, you know, do we, you know, do we do anything about it or, or not? You know, so it's kind of a question. Yeah, but, makes sense. I'm like um, starting to close my but eyes. But like a like lot that. of the time, 
my god. For a lot of years, like the the blog posts and stuff, like you guys have featured fan art and stuff like that, which is really awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Well, I'm like I, I know none of you have like an active like or that big of an active presence because you prefer it to do it in like a more private way, which is entirely valid, right? But like, do, do you yeah. guys still like roam around and like <laughs> see what's going well, on? Well, I know I do. I can't. I can only speak for myself. I like I, I check in with the communities probably daily. Kind of just take deep. yeah, almost daily. Do you see any my I, stuff? I have like a lot of work going on, like with the crow swarm. Do you know this me? Update we had last week. You know, I was out of mm -hmm. out of the country and stuff. But um, yeah, you just kind of take a peek and look around, see what people are saying, and um, but when it comes to community management, I've I always encourage the teams I work with to be pretty hands off on all that. Uh, it's a lot of work, as I'm sure you're aware. So you've seen um, Twitch channel, I get raided by f yeah the and the fanboy the I can't game. Imagine trying to manage a Discord the size of the Hollow Knight Discord. It's it's uh you know and Discord reaches out to us and they'll be like, wait, you guys don't own this Discord because you know <laughs> you, 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 there's like. And we're like, no, you know, they're Wait, like, what? do you have an official Hollow Knight Discord? And it's like, I mean, that's the one where everyone's at. Like, that's, we're not going to go. <laughs> that's not an official one way. What? We have to moderate and set the rules for and check in on people and get rid of. I didn't I, I know that. All other world developers. Yeah. I just tell them, don't, you don't even want to go in there. <laughs> like, and you guys are a really out. small team too. I feel like that's yeah, always important to, to bring up in terms of, I uh, always thought that was like the official, things. like whatever they may be, the developers you know, are in their Discord. shaped elephant in the room. Uh, but you <laughs> because know, the developers you are in up. there. They, there's like <laughs> five of you total. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't yeah, make the Discord server. What? Yeah, there's, like, there's you, there's Jack, Ari and William. And Chris, Chris, right? Yeah. And then there's the testers, like Greg, for example. Right? Yeah. Well, there'll be. They're all in there. I mean, we'll we'll have. Uh, I mean, everybody tests. You know, like in indie games, everyone kind of does everything. A lot of everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. I just expect the someone from that team um, to also go and like manage a Discord. Or a forum, let's say, like if we're going old school, you know, like especially a forum if the on Discord the has three hundred thousand members or something. You know? Is it at three hundred thousand? I don't know. I don't <laughs> check Hollow Knight main for my sanity. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of, oh, I'm kind of yeah. running the same approach as you guys are. Is it called R slash Discord? 000. That's a lot of people. Two hundred eighteen thousand. It's incredible. So it's yeah. It's a so red Discord. It's a big responsibility. And or R slash Hollow Knight. That's what we just that's figured. What I and you know, this I think this bears out to be true that the fans will handle those communities themselves and if people <laughs> don't want to be a part of it they'll go to the one they do want to be a part of and it'll just work itself out you know yeah like natural selection <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it makes sense the ones that sense. are uh bad will die out and the ones that are good that people like will will flourish you know the just, uh, the evolutionary forces force applying upon yeah the hollow Knight exactly. community discords <laughs> for all you science lovers out there yeah um you learn about natural selection in the school i don't know if they teach that anymore maybe it's changed now they do but... of course they do <laughs> oh, okay um <laughs> yeah well it's been a while since i've been in high school okay yeah <laughs> i, I like, can speak you know. as a current experiencer of i guess the swedish equivalent okay uh <laughs> but All yeah, right. I guess on a, on, a, on a note that I'm very excited to, to hear about, uh, speedruns. I love speedruns. Speed I'm a speedrunner. Oh, yeah. Do you guys watch speedruns? I watch them sometimes. I Again, I can't speak for the whole team. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're pretty... I think they're cool to watch. But Have you seen my speedrun? I don't know. I'm not... I don't have that level of skill. So it's kind of <laughs> like, it's like yeah, when you first start watching me, you're like, oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah. Uh, but the way you guys 
sort of just keep doing the same thing over and over again to shave a couple. The way seconds. I kill Gruz mother. I, I don't want before Mothwing like Cloak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, makes sense. It's fun to come see. Or, I mean, Matt's you know, hang out and talk with folks. Mm. Uh, but, it's beautiful. But you're also. But with speed Ingenious running, strategy. I don't, don't want to distract you either. Invented <laughs> by me. Be like, hey, Danny Zowo. Have you, if you like, were to mess up a move or something, because I said something, I'd feel pretty terrible. So no, I'll that would be your fault. That that's what we call that, a skill oh, yeah. issue. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be able <laughs> that's to. A skill issue. Yeah, if if I throw because you entered chat, that's my fault. You know. Oh, throw. Yeah, like, yeah throw a run. Like throw away the. Okay. The pace. You know. You're learning a lot of lingo today. I have a few, a few we... more language lessons lined up for later. Um, and actually, I guess uh, a funny thing to mention is that was the original yes. idea for this stream when I when I reached out to you. Oh uh, yeah, a few yeah, months yeah. ago. Wait, the what? original idea was Back that I would <laughs> Im interview Leth while teaching him how to speedrun Hollow Knight. So we 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 might have to shelve that <laughs> yeah. for a future time. Because oh it, it's that's a little sick. Much, I, would, I want to see do that. that. I, I was like, I don't want to try and. Are you kidding? <laughs> That'll be embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. Yeah, Blue, It'd be funny uh, though. Reached out, wanted it, doing the awesome with the, teaching me how to speed run simultaneously. Yeah. Which I probably wouldn't even be able to talk. Yeah. Focused on. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was a bit <laughs> Hold on, much. I'm trying to. One thing at a time, you know. So I just kind of, I was kind of like, um. You know, I don't go out of my way to do interviews. So let me just, let's wait till I feel like we got stuff to talk, you know, something relevant to talk mm -hmm. about and pushed it back until the Cross Warren update. Yeah. So that, uh, yeah. Why so, is this yeah, stim I, session? I felt like, right, it's you know, not what it looks like. Full time. Let's uh, have something new. This is not what it looks like. That just happened. And so yeah, I reached back out. So I'm watching an interview by. Last week, I think I was in Canada already. I was like, hey, you know. Uh, this person. Finally, do this interview. And I got bored, so I'm playing Hollow Knight. We've been talking about this for a Here few months now. Oh yeah. We we thought yeah. about doing it right That's around the, uh, the. So uh, we can watch me play Hollow Knight. Song delay. But and we decided to do it now. Uh, watch an interview. Just work better, I suppose. Um, I think it's a win-win. Well, if you remember. Some Andy why, gamer. You can ask me. Andy. You know why? Why not do the? I am so incredibly tired right now. Yeah. Uh, How are you doing, Andy? Yeah, it's, uh, yeah for sure. I I accidentally I like accidentally pulled on. on I'll there. hold on for that one for a few more minutes. Also, we said we were gonna try to aim for an hour and a half. This is gonna probably go longer than an hour and a half. Why'd I'm you just pin that? If that's good with you. Oh, it's. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> hour and a half to two hours would be, you know. Yeah. Good, uh, good, good time. That means we were kind of just chill and, uh, you know, had some banter. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I guess something I was curious about. Showing the hall now uh, while you're working. Because, you know, on a, awesome. from a, uh, like, regarding so you can work running, while watching someone play hall night while they're watching you know, an I interview know what it's like. But on their stream. You you are a developer. So like this, you you've worked on coding and great. creating games for Hollow Knight. That's not like exactly kind of the, your main. Thing, just right? a, a um, stim community from a developer expect uh, perspective like is it is it flattering or is it frustrating to see people like absolutely pick apart your game like did you know you can beat hollow knight in five minutes uh if you would use all glitches <laughs> uh, less than five minutes i i probably oh i don't know i haven't been put in that i did a midge of coding for mm -hmm. hollow knight i think if I recall, I did a little bit of coding for the language selection screen at the start of the game. Like, letting you pick, you know, English, Spanish, yeah. or whatever. I think I coded that. <laughs> like, uh, just a little bit. We've even interviewed so far. I hadn't even opened Unity before. They're like, can, can you code that? I'm like, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, um, I would assume... I don't know if I was making a I have to like yell I because I if I don't runners in mind I, just, I, just, like I would be thinking I just if I place like this. this little flying guy here they'll see it I as a pogo opportunity works. to skip this or understand. that you know like yeah you know it's something I would be conscious of and yeah, yeah like I have to shout my words so it's okay like, yeah, I am pretty awesome way too tired to just like, talk uh, normally as long as they're not I mean yeah, a husk of a person right now I'm sorry yeah, it doesn't. It it's gonna be, it's gonna be like this for the remainder of the stream. Break in the game until I go to sleep. <laughs> unless it's like something that 
<laughs> Unless it's like something that happens for everybody, and then it's like, oh yeah. wow, okay, oh like everybody's god. having this problem. Oh my god. And like the the thing is, that, but... and I, I think Team Cherry, like, seem to share that that philosophy for the most part. Uh, like for one, you guys yeah. added the speedrun patch to the Steam beta, which was really nice. Like that was yeah, that was such a big like uh, gesture for support of the speedrunning community. And we all really appreciate that because it, it makes it so much they did more do that. accessible. That for those awesome. that don't know, if you want to, just lost all my health. I just killed. 1.2.2.1, which is the one we do. For example, any percent true ending and all skills in for the optimal times. The old process, you had to do some like Steam down patching. You had to like patch. Steam I did that. And there was like a really. I had to do all of that because I watched Fireborn's and tutorial. It's on not do actually it. shady, but kind of shady process. It, it yeah. feels a bit shady. You're not like you're not uh, doing anything. Like you're not pirating the game. It's nothing like that. You, like it's through Steam, but it's it was a very unintuitive process. And around mid when was it? Mid 2021, uh, Team Cherry added that uh, that patch as a beta that you can opt into in the Steam uh, options. Team on Discord. Yeah, I think Fireborn. I have the server yeah, see, muted in like. Of I mean, but no is, mention pings, and exactly that it still pings me. To <laughs> why? At least active to a degree, you mm -hmm. know, with the the fans is if they have an outlet to kind of reach out to someone like me, who has access to the team. You know, I'm like, hey, uh, like Fireborn. I'm pretty sure it's Fireborn. It might have been a different sh streamer. Fireborn, if he's if he's here, he could confirm or not if he wants. But it would Fireborn's be like, probably watching the stream. Hey, can we get this one? Was it one two two one? Yeah, one two two one. As a, as a uh, branch, you know, and because Steam has the ability, to, you could drop down and pick a branch, and you know, like that would be really great for speedrunners. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a fantastic idea. And it, you know, if we still have that up that build, you know, I'll just tell uh, Jack and see if he can upload a speedrun branch, and he did it. Yeah. Not too long. I mean, just a couple days later. Um, to me, that's really like, uh, that's that's sort of real interaction with the uh, you want you want to say community or public relations or, mm -hmm. or, or gestures like that, not what uh, are you talking about? You know, and like the riddles. Yeah, for sure. We like did from like the that. side of uh, of the community, it's it's really nice as well to like feel like like obviously you you can't just like <laughs> we don't want to waste your time. When, because it's like, oh yeah. But if if there's something that is important, could be done quickly. Interesting. Well, yeah, of to course. You, so. Then we we don't feel like it's good that we don't that we have that opportunity to reach out and just like talk about it, and then maybe something mm -hmm. can be done. And I think even in regards to like actual, uh, actually like in the game, Team Cherry have included like for speedrunning. Now we're talking about a different topic, by the way. But uh, like there are a lot of skips that we kind of have theorized that are. Uh, intended uh, and obviously it's really hard to know without you know Ari or William or, or Jack or uh, anyone yeah. confirming but there's there are some like there's there's this uh, statue below the watcher's spire that is very conveniently placed that you can get up there without using wings because um, you can pogo it or yeah something? exactly okay yeah that probably was I don't know I don't know if that was deliberate or not but I'd probably lean towards it was if, um, yeah. if I feel like most people convenient. agree that one is very it feels very deliberate um, <laughs> yeah. and even in the cases where like Team Cherry patches things that that you know we use in our speedruns like one of the big ones that I poked fun at you the other day for was the the inventory drop right <laughs> um, oh they yeah did you patch that, the menu even though it's like not it, it like it's not we can always down patch right so it, it's not the biggest deal when stuff that only affects us is patched uh but even in that case like there are uses of the inventory drop that really break the game like for example you can oh. you can get soft locked out of vengeful spirit for example if you inventory drop into the pickup and walk out of the room it's a little little oh, okay. awkward uh i highly recommend you take a look at some glitch speed runs later they're pretty crazy okay. uh okay. and they're they're pretty hard to understand but they're very they're very interesting and um i don't know like what the main thing I want to kind of my the point I'm trying to make is that um, 
when we break things, we do it out of passion for the game, right? It's never like a, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna right, go yeah, yeah. desecrate this developer's work, right? <laughs> nah, that's exactly no, I don't what they're just doing. Yeah, it's um, for that kind of re you know, breaking a game or finding a break <laughs> somewhere. Mm. Like if it helps your run, like they help yeah. your run. But I will say I tend to watch the non, yeah, the non break. I don't know what they're called. No major like glitches is, like, is the rule. No major sets. glitches. I would. I, yeah. prefer, I definitely prefer to watch something that I could theoretically do and mm -hmm. not have to. Yeah, that makes to, sense. To I've never even run a glitched one like, uh, personally mm. either, but I, I, okay. I think um, in general, in terms of speedrunning, or at least in in the Hollow Knight uh, community, I feel like they they don't get enough attention because they're they're as impressive. They're just a bit harder to get into and i think that's part of why they don't get that uh the uh the same what is the word i'm trying to think of uh the same exposure i suppose because they're a bit harder to understand like if you if you watch someone break the game and beat it in less than five minutes it's like whoa i have no idea what just happened <laughs> yeah uh so yeah, it's a bit harder true. to uh to grasp i suppose they're a little bit less uh Inviting oh to be I have to, I have to bounce off the fucking hit my head off the, under the roof. Um, uh, we still have uh, almost 1,500 people watching. That's crazy. 1.5k, how? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. That's a lot of people. What's Hope going on? Uh, we day. are watching um, how, how <clears throat> me dying of radiance, but we are also Over watching you are. the interview oh, with They're Matthew Griffin, who works on yeah. marketing and PR Hi, team. For uh, yeah. Hollow Knight. Okay, everyone's saying hi. That's good. And See, Crow the best Swarm. Part left, uh, I'll let you mess around with this if you want. And the uh, best part about having a big yeah. Twitch chat so song is uh, maybe when you tell the chat to do an emote and they all do it. Oh. It's very satisfying. And Risk of Wayne so, is Stardew uh, Valley. Chat. So. What's what's? I didn't mention that the, the promotion tweet that by the way. To me, um, this guy worked. This guy is the promotion guy on like Stardew Valley and Risk of Wayne one. But. <laughs> it was kind of a but no he's just the hall night guy back in december what was this 2020 <laughs> um is it 2020 where i we're being i told everyone to we're watching abs while watching blue say ascend with gorb <laughs> <laughs> well there you go ascend with gorb chat everyone spam ascend, ascend with, with gorb. gorb ascend with gorb yeah. holy I, uh, shit i was like let's go ascend with gorb and <laughs> i thought it was just gonna be fun you know Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it went pretty nuts. And I'm sure Nintendo was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, like in, yeah. the, in the Nintendo Direct, the Indie Direct in December. Um, and it had the unfortunate side effect of a lot of people thinking there was some kind of announcement happening. Oh, yeah, for sure. Everyone's. In the direct. <laughs> Wait, There's what's the whole always, the like, the second, thing? That, that's something. Yeah, I'll, I'll cover that was this a, like bit a, later, a goofy actually. line. I'm, I'm going to hold on. Well, yeah, thought. but. Let me just. I, uh, Why is it? What's this like movement like, behind it? The, the happy ending to the story was um, that I knew, I kind of knew it was like a calculated move to a degree because I knew that we had the Edge magazine coming uh -huh. that same month. Edge mag, yeah, so that's kind. That was crazy. At worst, people that was, they assume that that was pretty cool. News coming and then there's no news. Like seeing so Hornet on like a with, like a New York magazine. Edge magazine. But um, like what? I knew that there was. Something coming. What are you talking about? You know, You're crazy. They would forgive you. Except I'm not, I and it's real. They did. So, <laughs> I don't. I don't get emails saying I forgive you. That. <laughs> I forgive don't, you. That doesn't mean go email you. Don't email me that. It's, it don't mean me a forgiveness. Part. I can say it on behalf um, of everyone. All right. Thanks, I forgive please. you for uh, making people <laughs> say. Uh, I just thought it would be fun. I wasn't trying to. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that was probably the last time I was kind of like, okay, everyone's kind of on pins yeah. and needles here. So your shit posts are too powerful it. and you kind of learned right. your lesson, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, another exactly. thing that I was curious about regarding Hollow Knight um, is the voices, right? You voiced a few characters in Hollow Knight. Oh, voices yeah. in Hollow Knight, yeah. holy so like, shit, uh, I need to hear this. You voiced, uh, you voiced mm -hmm. Markoth, Lem are a few. I don't Everyone's actually favorite. remember a few, uh, if there's any more. I did the, the noise for Cloth Sleeping. Oh. Here, let me see if I can. It's like this. I haven't heard that before. 
So I uh, that's my Predator impression. You I know, can hear any old of movie that. Predator. <laughs> I don't think it went through. Uh, the, oh, it uh, didn't come through because no. I'm noise gated or something. Uh, but uh, feel free to do like a Lem or Mar or Markoth impression if you want. If you remember the line. Okay. I hear this. Wow, I can't believe that noise Nail doesn't Smith. doesn't go through. It's like that clicking, the, uh, uh, snoring. Markoth's like. Markoth has the coolest <laughs> voice in Hall Night. My throat. <laughs> oh my god. I just realized um, that. Yeah, nothing came through. Markoth is really just must be the my, coolest uh, character in Hollow Knight ever. Just this, because of his voice. Let's see here. It's a uh, voice and video, and then... Alright, let's try this again. Did that work? Still can't hear anything. What Damn the f... Alright. Oh, shit, wait. All right. I need to keep this in full screen. <laughs> Alright, that's okay. okay. Do you do Nail uh, Smith? So Lem... Nail Smith no will be Smith. like... Ah, uh, run just in. What? Wow. <laughs> what? Look at that. Look at that. Real. Um, Look at this voice actor over here. This <laughs> Real voice <laughs> actor. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive that you can just do it on command. <laughs> Not I can't exactly. believe no like, one's made you done the, do, do this cool. before. That's cool. I think I did it once. I always yeah, love when voice actors like do that. <laughs> like Dan Rivers, like, oh, just do, uh, do like the little then, pension of like you do a little voice chat, acting. Did the thing, chat, don't simp. <laughs> and they do a really awesome like sound <laughs> so exact so impression so they because it nice is them. They voice the character, so of telling, course they're gonna sound Andrew exactly. You or me like, or both of us too. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Um, and then Lem is kind of just my normal voice. I do it. I think I do a male man slightly because. Can we get a mailman for Markov? How, how did you deci decide what gibberish to say? Like, like, uh, what does Lem say? He says, tell me. All I has. No, that's just like yeah. me talking. Tell me. Yeah. But how, how did you, how did you decide, like, the gibberish? Like, how, what is that process? That's something I've always been curious about. Oh, yeah, I kind of went off script a little bit. We had some words. Wait, off script? Use. What did the <laughs> script look like? Bro, well, no, there wasn't a there wasn't a script, but we had we had kind of like a collection. Bro of went words. off script uh -huh. on that gibberish words. Said and stuff. What? And I just I was kind of like, I'm just gonna go to this uh, Dungeons and Dragons name generator <laughs> website, <laughs> and I looked up, I think I looked up human or human names or elvish names or something, and I started reading reading names <laughs> that it was generating. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. No way. There, there, there's something new we haven't heard before. That's really interesting, actually, because uh, like uh, I, I've, that's, yeah. I've always been curious about that. Denja was probably some warrior name or something, you know. Yeah, like, like yeah. how? Because the, 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 the strange thing do. about Hollow Knight and the the voice acting is that okay. um, everything is like they're all they all say their little different thing. But it still feels mm -hmm. really well connected, and I, I think that's impressive. Like how everything is like random, as you described it. <laughs> yeah. And it's still like in my in my uh, my head canon, it's like there's different dialects depending on the part of the world mm -hmm. you're in or something. You know, to, to explain away my my uh, just going and saying random names. <laughs> uh, but they're just kind of. I think they're just like, okay, that sounds good. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, there's no uh, there's no grand like <laughs> plan for it. Lem eat just... lem eat ten egg. <laughs> so you want people ask me to say lem eat ten egg? What? Why? That's like a big meme. That's some kind of meme. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I, I've what never heard that in my say? entire life. What? Says... What? Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I I I don't know. I'm blanking on it now. Uh. Helma. Oh, Helma Delka. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just Helma me Delka. talking. Like, yeah. <laughs> the the Markov and Nailsmith, I kind of like did like a really deep voice, and Markov was like, I really, I want to hear Markov. Great battle, monster. really bad, or something. You have you know, no idea how badly I want to hear Markov. Was that the same approach? I mean, he just Markov. I just wanted him to sound cool because I I thought the character looked cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you He's succeeded. the coolest character in the army. All of the characters. Um. Kien. Oh, look at that. That That's cool. Bell me Archer. Bell me Archer. Bell me Archer. No, you have, have, have the pacing uh, right. The, uh, so have the exact pacing of the, the, the script of the, the voice line. for the nailsmith. I thought I was recording for Lem. Mm -hmm. That's true. I've heard I that before. I was trying to do this kind of like calm. 
He thought he was going for and, like, yeah. Soothing voice. And they ended up being like, no, 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 we'll, we'll use that for the nailsmith. Uh, we want this uh, Lem character to be kind of annoyed with you. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sighs, like, yeah. oh, Paul. Yeah, you know, there you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of like mm -hmm. exasperation, you know, like, yeah. oh my god, this little guy. This guy has said so much, so he's not the, just the okay, marketing and PR like, tape for the Fall Dawn Knight. Right. He's yeah, so yeah. much more. Um, it should have said, said voice actor of Lem and Lem Markov. We need to know. I, that's I it. That, know. That, that, like 10,000 10, viewers. That was a hilarious video. We've been though. there. Yeah, that, that's a good video. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think great. it's gonna be fun to see because I've seen you. Do, you've done some character voicing. You guys posted on um, Mongoose Radio's Twitter, I think, that you did some voicing. Oh there. yeah. And I'm, I'm not yeah, gonna I... I'm not gonna ask you to confirm or deny whether you're voicing any characters in Silk Song, uh, but okay. I don't know. I'm I'm excited for the future of recognizing, being like, whoa, was that left? Because that's always fun, you know. But the thing is, all I, the Hornet characters I'd in Hornet sound. I don't really. I don't really like, consider myself a voice actor. I think that um, they all the sound night, different. It's easier to get away, and they're with all voiced by like like three uh, people. Amateur, <laughs> for like a hundred characters. Because you're speaking. I don't understand, and they language. all sound different. Every single one of mm -hmm. them. So you, so I feel like um, it was Pro Sworn when I did kind of like the Hey There Lad uh, video mm -hmm. for the. I was just sending him like this is what it could be like. You know, you're just yeah. So it's more like a placeholder, like a, I guess. Yeah, it was. It was. I think. Yeah, they were wondering how. I think we were talking about what could voice acting be like in the game. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, they could just have a greeting that they say to you, like, yeah, you know, it's like, what do you want, you know? And it doesn't necessarily have to match up with what they're saying. That what they're saying, it just kind of establishes their character and how they sound. Yeah. And that, that's probably what we'll end up doing. That's a nice Instead approach. Instead of doing like a full, a full voiceover, seems like a huge undertaking. I can't, I, I don't understand how companies do that. <laughs> you gotta give Mac to... Guy something to do, you know? <laughs> Mac yeah, Guy, but, yeah. With vocalized, um, you know? Chris Warren means... vocalized, Silk Song vocalized. <laughs> right. Well, it's the, it means you have to have the script like 100% worked out far in advance. And I just don't know if indie teams work that way. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Know? Like the one exception is like things. that I can think of is Hades, and that must have been like such a big endeavor, right? Mm. The amount of uh, voice acting and oh, that game is so good. Right. And I I, I won't play Hades. That's like yeah, it's incredible when it's after done, Hall Night I beat Panther out. Five. I, I'm gonna do uh, Rain World I again. I've never done anything like that. And I might do Hades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would because be. I uh, have that game. Pretty big undertaking for sure. Uh, so you wanna? Do you guys wanna know? Seems like fun games, and I I think I'll join this rodeo. Yeah, is, is I was gonna I was gonna uh, move over to that. I actually only had one more question, and I wasn't oh, okay. planning on asking this uh, like, regarding Hollow Knight at least oh, or for now. Oh, here we uh, go. But a lot of people have been asking it in chat, and I figured I would I would ask as well. Uh, I'm dead. And since I mentioned already, Hellenus vocalized, and I guess Pale Court as well. The two big fan-made mods that have come out. Oh have yeah. You, how much have you seen of those? Like, what what are your thoughts? I, I haven't seen much of those mods. Um, what do you think? They're I'm about the they're, I just, I, uh, mono and watching no uh, you no smith very gazing. very cool. Uh, I very nearly uh, like I, I almost on of his oro mono. I, I forget uh, which for the vocalized, but just mm -hmm. ended up kind of backing out of it. And, yeah. Uh, you know, apologizing to CC, but. <laughs> Like, that's something I wanted to do, but uh, I just ended up getting really busy with other things. I couldn't couldn't make the time. That makes sense. You're a busy but, guy. Yeah, after all. You're working on so many things, like at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you got you got real life stuff too. Everybody yeah, does. Yeah. You know, exactly. But, but always uh, things come up. Breaking news: but, Team Cherry are real people. <laughs> what? They're re <laughs> with real lives. And they deserve yeah. to have a break as well. Okay. Yeah, I said That's not true. it's officially declared. No, don't uh, listen. Don't, don't, don't have a break. stop. Go get right, some rest. You. Don't work yourselves to death. That's bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
so I guess I'm gonna do something really cool here that you probably weren't expecting, except I accidentally already spoiled it to chat I think by I saw. accidentally moving the. I, I haven't Background it. change. Oh, the night's still What? Late. Boom! Background change. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're talking Crowsworn. Let's go. Crowsworn! Hell yeah. I Whoa, spent you snap way that too much from time. The... Let's go. I'm really? actually really excited for Crowsworn because I like this game. I saw the demo oh, yeah, of it. I really like this game. I like what I, I like what I saw. Some, like, in -game and I can't wait for I mean, open the for trailer. more. Like, is there any good background Just, from this? Yeah. Back. And then that looks nice. Cinematic hits me in the face, and I'm like, wait, this is perfect. This looks so good. <laughs> it almost looks like it was framed to, you know, oh yeah, for this uh, Discord setup because you got the sort of different colors on the top and bottom, and yeah. It looks great. I'm excited for Crossworn. And on that note, yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about Crossworn and Mongoose Rodeo and everything you've got All going right. on over there. Uh, well, so I can uh, I can kind of lead lead the charge here. Um, Go ahead. I in uh, what was this? 2020, late 2020. Man, this was uh, around the time of the Edge magazine and the out of context <laughs> bugaboo that won't go away. Of me saying, oh, the game's basically, you could say the game's basically mm -hmm. finished, but blah, 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 <laughs> that's out of context. People thought I was talking about Silk Song when it wasn't. Um, I, I tend to still keep an eye out for new games to work oh on. Mm -hmm. And one of those ways I'll do that is is checking uh, the screenshot Saturday hashtag. And I might be misremembering this, but I'm pretty sure I found Crowsworn through that hashtag. It basically popped up on my Twitter feed somehow, whether it was through that or not. Um, and immediately I was like, "Oh, this looks this looks awesome!" Yeah. Like, uh, I followed them uh, in December of 2020, hoping they would see and you know follow me back so we could chat, but they didn't. <laughs> it was heartbroken. Uh, and then um, about what was it? April, March. I think it was late March of 2021. They put out their their coming to Kickstarter trailer, and there was a little bit of controversy going on about it. Like Mossbag even replied to it, mm -hmm. like this isn't a copy of Hollow Knight kind of thing was going on. That's actually we might. <clears throat> I should not. take that question now. Actually, now that you mentioned it. Which question? Um, okay. Because that that sort of thing with comparisons, and I was curious to hear your perspective on it. <laughs> Um, in regards to Crowsworn, like a lot of people, uh, is not copy all like, I can, I can in general you that. when talking about games, we use comparisons. It takes a lot it, as it, a it definitely takes inspiration, but, useful. but not in, a copy. In the, in the terms of Crowsworn, like for us content creators and stuff like that, like a lot of us make Hollow Knight uh, comparisons, obviously, because oh a lot of us are Hollow Knight fans who are also really excited about Crowsworn. Um, mm -hmm. But do you, do you feel like the comparison stuff outside of that original c controversy? Do you feel like it gets taken too far? Do you feel like it diminishes from the original vision that you're trying to create that everyone just keeps referring back to another thing? Oh, well, I think that that's just natural. Um, we're not gonna go around telling people how they should talk about Crowsworn. <laughs> you know, that's just game developers have like the most like. So you guys are free to. Oh, talk like about the game oh, there's like a mob on. outside our house. We, you know, it's like natural. You just of, made a bad so game. I uh, found out about the game. Well, I found out about the game prior to that controversy. Or mm -hmm. someone's, I, we kind of deserve it to be honest. I mean, but yeah. a lot of people found out about it because of that. So, you know, when you look at it objectively, it's certain, at least from a marketing perspective, you know, which is something I look at. Um, it was it was great for the game, and so we certainly aren't going to go around and tell people stop comparing <laughs> us to Hollow Knight. Yeah, um, makes sense. The only thing that that a developer has to do if they don't want that comparison to be made is work to delineate the game from mm -hmm. from the inspiration as much as possible. And I think the team's making strides to do so, uh, but it's also one of those things where it's like but we want Hollow Knight players to to want to play Crowsworn, you know yeah, like it's, for sure. it's it's like the same genre mm -hmm. a lot of the feel is the same you know you got pogoing and exploration and whatever so theoretically someone who likes Hollow Knight will like Crowsworn. 
I'll vouch so. for this, actually. I played the beta the other week. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah, really yeah. good. I'm super excited for it. it yeah, I, I watched oh, the beta, so... <laughs> there you go. There, the... I saw that you had the highest viewed Crowsworn playthrough video on, on Twitch. Wait, he has a video on it? <laughs> yeah, it had, like, a bunch of views on it. <laughs> and Colette... I Wait, what? Number two. Yeah. Why have That's I never awesome. seen it? I think I saw them in chat, the actually. Uh, just uh, yeah, Colette's there. I, or at least earlier. Oh, there. Hi, Colette. <laughs> but, uh, we're, you know, we're not going to shy away from that. But the the only way that would result in, like, a... I'm not talking about Crossborn here, but if you're just theoretically of work on a game and people are drawing comparisons and then the game doesn't, you know... Separate itself. Satisfy. Yeah, it or it doesn't even... Well, even... You could, you could take that approach, but I feel like if the game is just a lot like Colonnade, but has some differences and it's a new mm -hmm. world and new and you know new enemies bosses and whatever people will be happy with that but if it's like a a game that doesn't quite cut it let's say um then people will be like oh you kind of bamboozled me into buying this game yeah but it makes sense Crosshorn's, Crosshorn's not gonna have that problem so we're not worried about that yeah i mean you know on top of the that, game I i'm like marketing and like yeah, my my like, pr team yeah we're not gonna do that of calling it a ripoff uh, no, oh, I'm that, not lying. Um, it's, it's, it's like not. Oh, chat. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah. We're not gonna comment on that. Uh, but okay. <laughs> okay. that's pretty funny though. What, uh, what's chat saying? But yeah. Um, Why? Yeah, we're not talking about anything in particular here. To be clear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but I feel like, at the end of the day, iteration and inspiration is such an important part of the creative process. Like, from from a gamer's perspective, as you said, if I love Hollow Knight, which I do, and I see a game that is inspired by Hollow Knight, but, like, does its own thing and takes that inspiration mm -hmm. and makes makes its own game, such as Crossworn, it's like, I, I look at that and I'm like, oh, wow, I love Hollow Knight. This is going to be cool. I'm excited for this. Uh, yeah. And I think yep, yep. in fandom culture, there, there tends to be Finally. a small subset of people that kind of end up... I'm hungry. I don't know. They they get really defensive about their things, and it results in stuff like yeah, they got their team. Yeah, yeah, they're they got like their that. team, and they're they're rooting yeah. for their team. Exactly. That's okay. I mean, that's just, but it's it's not a competition, just... is what I'm saying. Um, which I'm sure you agree with. Like, for the for context, mm -hmm. even Team Cherry backed uh, Mongoose Rodeo's Kickstarter for Crossworn. I'm yeah, pretty sure. That's that's true. Yep. They uh, they, they got yeah, the. Dude. I think they got the access to the demo too. Probably play the demo. Look at that. It's I mean, all... they yeah, they commented on it. Yeah, they backed mm -hmm. it and commented on it. There's um, when I first joined the team, I mentioned <laughs> that I was thinking about joining Mongoose Rodeo in the same capacity, and they were like, "Oh yeah, the game looks awesome. We uh, when's the Kickstarter?" <laughs> you know, I was mm -hmm. like, "Okay, that yeah. answers that question." You know, it was yeah. pixel so perfect wall jump. Well, the point ascend, we're trying ascend, to make ascend. here is that. Oh boy. You don't need to go on your defense. Uh, well, don't harass anyone in general, but you know, there's no need to like <laughs> defend Team Cherry's <laughs> honor against the pesky Crossworn, you know. <laughs> I suppose. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't. I mean, I get to see both sides. I don't really see. I, I Maybe I'm not clued into enough parts of the internet or something but i haven't really seen much uh anything mean really being yeah you know it was a bit anybody. at the start right but it, it cooled down probably yeah i think uh right i i then i joined the team <laughs> i feel like i've heard it, of, it of, of like wait a minute <laughs> crow sworn he's playing earlier. both sides <laughs> yeah yeah it was like he's not like gonna go before. do that unless i never actually cool. looked into it till yeah. like like a week from now so it was that that probably uh, was a big, I don't know. I kind of just that maybe wanted to join the team more. Yeah, I like I like a little bit of controversy. It's <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it was funny because you 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 and Mongoose Rodeo before you announced that you joined the team, you guys were having like some some uh, banter back and forth, and they were like, "Yo, Leth, look at our look at us," and you were like, "Ooh," you know, everyone mm -hmm. got a bit of a teaser and then a few days later you announced that oh i'm on board yeah yeah i um i think i think 
some, I think I got tagged in a tweet from Mossbag or something, or a mm -hmm. reply to him. And and people are like, what do you think? You know, I was like, oh, I think it needs a little bit more buzz sauce, you know, or something <laughs> like. Well, and it would be a, in, you know, a true reply to Yeah. But just um, but I said that before I even start. Lotus Knight? Are you talking about Lotus Knight right now? They, they, when they <laughs> no me way. Back, I was I was pretty excited to um, just chat with them and, and I figured they were gonna get some publisher eyes um, around that time and it sounds like you know they were and I was like well you know let's chat before you go make a decision like that and see if maybe you guys would like a th think we're a better fit for what you want you know we'll see I mean there are in indie teams that want publishers too yeah you know, they. Like, that's what they want. So I talked to them, and they're like, uh, no, we, we want a publisher. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I don't think we're the right fit then. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I work better with people who want to be more independent and kind of loose with how things are handled. Uh, so, you know, you, that's another thing you learn, too. That's another thing you learn in the sort of game development scene. It's kind of like what kind of folks... You can get, like, a feel for people and... and you know, I might like a game a lot, but if I get I get the feel that maybe we're not, you know, not gonna mix well, and it's like, well, I just, you know, don't think it's the right fit, guys. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, something like that. That's only happened like once or twice. Saying so. we're not the yeah, right that fit makes, is just a, lot of sense. a very polite really way of really saying like you suck. Uh, I don't want to work with you. And then, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, about two years ago, exactly. Though, uh, I guess the the most important thing was. Chris Warren's Kickstarter. You guys launched it. Yeah, about, about two years a million ago. Million right? bajillion and dollars. Yeah, we like, just what? had the anniversary of the end of How? the Kickstarter last week. Yeah. So eight days ago. Two years and about a month. And yeah, it's been two years. That's it's been a while. <laughs> I know. Two I can't believe lives. it's been two years already. Yeah. And uh, well, I think to say that the Kickstarter for Chris Warren was a success is probably the biggest understatement I could make because yes. it was a very very big success and I'm, I'm wondering uh, in general has that I don't hear I don't hear you anymore did my internet drop Oop. oh 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 Oop. can you hear me hello hold on <laughs> uh oh <laughs> oh wow can you wait is stream still live? Is it me or is it live? The stream is wait. Can you live? Hear me? And I can hear you on the stream, like with a delay, huh. but I don't hear you through Discord. That's really strange. Uh. No. Hello. Hey, hello. Hello. Uh oh boy. <laughs> Try. It. It's okay. over. It's all over. No, I don't hear you. Try leaving and rejoining the call. But I can hear you on the stream. All right, cool. We're communicating with a few <laughs> seconds of delay, but that's nice. no. So if you no. Can so you might have to mute uh, no. the Discord. No, we need we need to hold on. I'm gonna try. Hello. Hello. I still don't hear you. Wait, if you can hear me on stream. Maybe I need let... to drop out. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, he just has a lot of delay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. on. Bear with us. Bear with us. I don't know if we can any longer. Hello? Hello? I need my constant TikTok reaction. Fucking. Hello? 24 7 like simulation. Where do I do the Lego Yoda death scream? Hold on. Hold on. Here? Soundboard. <laughs> oh no. It's your connection? Alright, alright. We can wait a bit. We can wait a bit. We can hang out. We can hang I don't, out. I don't, I don't know about that. How, um, how are you liking the know. interview so far, chat? Uh, I might just leave. How, how are I don't you know. enjoying your time today? There's a lot of new faces in chat today. A lot of, a lot of people have been finding their ways here from the all the different corners of indie games and the Hollow Knight community. Uh, welcome. I guess I should introduce myself. We introduced Leth. If you don't know me, 
Uh, I'm blue. I'm a Hollow Knight speedrunner. I said I am and, so uh, EP. General content creator. I make uh, videos on YouTube about the game. Uh, I'm mainly a 112% all Pantheon bosses runner. Uh, but I don't know. I'm a big Hollow Knight fan. So this is a pretty crazy opportunity. And uh, Left can probably hear me through the stream right now. I'm, I'm thankful to him for the opportunity. Uh, and I'm glad he. Uh, uh, that I wasn't too too scary and intimidating as a person. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Is now a good time to tell you all that I don't know how to interview people? Because uh, he's I, been doing yeah, a very good job. I don't know how to interview people. I'm trying my best here, uh, and I feel like uh, I don't know. It's 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 going fine. It's it's better than yeah, you're I doing fine. than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be really nervous, and I am still. <laughs> A little bit nervous. It's been going uh, like great. Like not to be too cheesy or anything, but thing. you know, it is. Uh, it is pretty crazy. Uh, techno, te te that techno is difficulties. That is hey, hello. I hear you. Yes, we're so back. Let's go. Well, another I... another uh, slang lesson, by the way. Uh, what? Something us Zoomers say now is that when something is going badly, we say it's so over, or we say okay. it's it's Joe. what I said. Which is. Uh, what? portmanteau of uh, Joe Biden and over because there's a picture of Joe Biden where he looks sad that people post and they say it's Jover uh, okay. and when when things are looking good again we say we're so back uh, we're so, so back. we're so back we're okay. so back right oh now my gosh yeah you kids <laughs> lingo it's yeah over. for context um, when I love, uh, when I they love did this the crossword and Kickstarter anniversary stream. A new lingo. Oh, the no, Mo Mongoose you gotta... Radio. Uh, they were <laughs> trying to figure it? out. I was having so much You're fun. So loud, I can't. I they can't. were all trying to figure out like uh, young people slang because we're all yeah. old. Sorry, the face was issue. I was having. I I have made a promise to myself to teach left some uh, some uh, Gen Z language. Yeah, we were hanging out before going live here, get, uh, getting a few little pointers. About the Zoom yeah. slang, yeah. Not not to tease anything, but I'm I'm gonna teach you a slang that is so it, it's gonna be so useful in your uh, professional life that I don't okay. know you you <laughs> you might just have to start using it right away. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Watch. You know the the Zoomer slang is very powerful. It has a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kadea says, "Hey with Riz." <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Yeah, Riz is like someone who Kadeh. is uh, charming, Riz. I guess. Someone who is ah. yeah, so Riz. someone who has charisma. It's charisma. That's what. Riz oh, is. all right. That's it's where a the girl. girl comes from, Get the chance. The... Sorry, I'm so oh, sorry. Charisma. charisma. Okay. So I'll go back into the vod. Uh, time, like, time, like, like time, like that clip and delete it. <laughs> I'll delete that exactly. entire clip. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Good warlock, that. Mm -hmm. Or is it warlock? Or I don't sorcerer. know. Sorcerer and paladin. <laughs> nah, I haven't. I, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But so where I was were asking, we? Uh, um, the Kickstarter. Yeah. So we were talking about the Kickstarter before your internet dropped out. Welcome back, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I I went and connected. It was having. It wasn't letting me reconnect. So mm -hmm. I went and connected to like another server's voice and then exited that and then came back. I don't, I don't know. It fixed it. <laughs> That's good. We're so back. Exactly. See, chat's We're using so it back. We're so back. We are so, so back. Um, but yeah, we were talking about the Crossworn uh, Kickstarter about a uh, two years ago, right? Yeah. And I was just saying that, well, the Crossworn Kickstarter, uh, to say that it was a big success... It has to be the biggest understatement because it was <laughs> a massive success. And yeah, the main question I have, I guess, regarding that is how much, how, how were you expecting anything close to that? And how did that change your approach to, well, everything in general? Because that, that's a pretty big uh, opportunity, but also like a, a responsibility, right? When you're crowdfunding a Kickstarter. A game. Yeah, um, I think we were hopeful and kind of, we knew it could be big, 
if we did I it. I should have gone through right. while they're having the um, difficulties. Kind of just uh, a lot of things, a lot of stars were aligning, you know, around I'm that period starving. for the game. Like, you don't we understand. had sort of the, the, the blow up of the kicks, coming to Kickstarter video. I joined the team. It kind of brought it, a lot of eyes and attention to it. And it, just, it made a lot of sense to launch the Kickstarter at that point. But we, none of us had done a Kickstarter before. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's just a matter of uh, where we going to approach. The, it, the, I think the bigger question marks were, are we going to do this whole Kickstarter thing right? <laughs> you know, like, what's the formula or what's mm -hmm. the... How do you approach this? Because that was a part of um, Hollow Knight's development that you weren't there for, right? Because you joined I wasn't it there for a that. lot later. Uh, no, but I've backed projects before, uh -huh. so I kind of had a um, you know a sense of how they're usually run, and um, I, yeah, pretty much through backing, it's kind of like you you understand stretch goals and all those things. Like we we understood how they they are typically operated, but we tried to kind of buck trends with uh, our approach in terms of working with um, marketing agencies or paying for mm -hmm. ads or whatever. We just went ground game fully, kind of like how I just would launch a game anyhow through Twitter and YouTube and whatnot. And we ended up getting a ton of uh, new... This was like, I think for, for Crow Sworn, we had like half and half people who had already backed something on Kickstarter before and people who never backed anything on Kickstarter before. That's that's impressive. Which, which I think was... What are the numbers? I, I, for, I forgot. I missed for, uh, it. Miss it. And games aren't really done on, as much on Kickstarter now uh, anymore. Anyhow, it's mostly board games, it seems like, in the gaming sense. Board games can get, get big and video games can do pretty well, but depending on the scope of your game, you know, it might not be enough. Like something games, I've uh, seen a lot is board games based on games, right? Yeah, uh, there's that too, and like, that, that's a, that goes back to our whole like they go with the easy, you know, the sure thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a makes sense, low risk um, idea. But yeah, I, I got the uh, I backed the Witcher board game. Finally got it, you know. And it's just this giant box full of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like, Even a lot of indies. It. Like I think Terraria is doing a board game. Uh, I want to say Dead mm -hmm. Cells Stardew is doing a board game. They Binding of Isaac, is, a bunch of people, uh, right? Well, Stardew didn't do a Kickstarter. I was a I I was a part of the board game too for mm -hmm. Stardew Valley, um, and then I, I brought the designer to Eric, and they kind of worked together on developing the game. And I did a lot of early testing with it, um, and they kind of just made that happen outside of a, like a crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that game's done really well too. So yeah, it make th these board games based off video games are, yeah, they're a hit. <laughs> Fortnite Monopoly. I get it. Yeah. But it does seem like Kickstarter is more board game friendly right now mm -hmm. than video games. Maybe that's just because people kind of, maybe people were burned on video games in the past, you know, like they backed a game and it didn't come out or something. I mean, even in uh, terms of, I feel like the last few years though, uh, in, Getting better. Yeah, like in terms of uh, Metroidvanias, we've we've been eating good mm. with Kickstarter. You know, there there have been a lot of oh yeah uh, games that I guess I guess some of that could be attributed to uh, Hollow Knight as well, right? The big success that Hollow Knight was that a lot of people uh, they hear that story or other games. We're in the like, Metroidvania era. And now they're a little bit more attentive in the early stages, games. right? That oh. This game looks cool. This could be something that is interesting. I uh, think. I don't know. Like, there was uh, Haiku the Robot. There are so many. I can't even yeah. name all of them. But uh, there's yep. a lot of really Zappling, good... Zapling, Haiku, um, mm -hmm. Lone Fungus. Uh, these, yeah, a lot of Kickstarter that turned into... And Crossworn. <laughs> yeah. And Crossworn, that too, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, there's been a couple others mm -hmm. since even since Crossworn. Yeah, there was um, kind of like Rune Fencer, Ilya, right? A few... Months ago, that was new. Yeah. I need soul. Oh, yep. there's a bunch of games. Oh god. I, you know, it'd be nice to see more games on Kickstarter again, but mm -hmm. I don't know for whatever reason. I kind of wish that Greenlight would. I mean, I don't want to go off on a tangent too much, but like, 
I kind of wish Greenlight would come back in almost a Kickstarter sense for Steam, mm -hmm. where you can like set up a page and crowdfund a project on Steam, <laughs> and then la and then eventually launch it on Steam. Like so something that exists boss. alongside the just regular upload process, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. So that it's like, still, like it, accessible it, to people to just put a game out. Right. Yep. I feel like that'd be great for teams to get you to focus on marketing mm -hmm. and pushing your game, getting some funding instead of doing early access. But maybe they're just maybe early access is the solution to that. But mm -hmm. I I don't you know I don't really agree. But that's a whole other yeah a whole other big topic. So we basically uh, the Kickstarter was a smash it overperformed clearly you had to <laughs> so make a started... long staircase for those stretch goals. yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah that's a huge staircase for the little little guy to walk down or um and we start we started struggling to come up with things that made sense you know to add as mm -hmm. stretch goals i mean kind of like all the things we were hoping for got hit pretty quickly and then we were like oh uh you know voice acting would be nice you know let's mm -hmm. do one for that and and then um, we'll do the first DLC. We'll promise a post-launch DLC. And then the, the, I think the final one was uh, the animated sequences, mm -hmm. cutscenes. And that was kind of a wish. And then we'll do a third list, DLC. Like, oh, that's actually going to be a second game yeah, that will release in five years. It, and then we hit it, you know, last, <laughs> so. the second to last day, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last day we hit one million US dollars. Which was a, a thousand percent the amount that you were <laughs> yeah. aiming for originally isn't like that's crazy and i'm wondering yeah like, that's pretty wild in terms of like do you feel the weight i know you've mentioned this a little bit in the the backer updates uh mm -hmm. but like is that a weight that you feel like you need to live up to something now like to a well, bigger degree than oh of course yeah of course um the but it's also something that, it's a position you want to be in mm -hmm. you know it's like a it's one of those um it's a nice problem to have. They, yeah, I think that's the thing or something. It's a very like that. nice opportunity. Uh, right, when it comes like to like, right, uh, to yeah, exactly. Where most of so all the those problems are taking this very seriously and is gonna, you know, just the game. I think the Kickstarter said it's supposed to come December 2023. That's mm -hmm. not gonna be the case. <laughs> we tried to make that clear many times. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're a couple years away. At least uh, a couple of years away before this, with the, the size and the success of the Kickstarter, we want to really do something special. What? Yeah. So that's the focus. And it's coming along. It's just going to take longer. So, so Sonic's going to kind of scoped. Come out before Cross Cross Sworn? So, I mean, that's I think that's only natural. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, with the Metroidvania, I guess it's kind of easy to tack on new areas. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep yeah. adding things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we try not to bloat it too much. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, something you don't want to do. But just make it higher quality. Yeah. Uh, not And maybe a little bit more quantity. And uh, I guess in terms of recent news regarding the Kickstarter and, and backer updates and stuff like that, there there was the big news of the demo, right? On the, the two-year mm -hmm. anniversary, uh, you guys held a stream and a bunch of other things. And you also uh, released the backer demo, and uh, yeah. some of you in chat, you might have you might have seen, you might have seen it around. You might have seen some gameplay. I don't know. Maybe some of you were even here when I streamed it. But um, like, how was the process of crafting a demo? Like, there's like obviously uh, they a, use a bit of a balance that you need to make. Not unfinished, but like showing scrapped out the ideas of the game. Of the game. But also not showing too much. And it was um, still great. And it I th was I amazing. I thought you had an interesting solution to that, and uh, I wanted to hear what you had to say about that. I suppose. Well, so I'm, you know, I'm a part of the team, and that that, you know, when it comes to marketing and all of that, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of my forte. But development of the demo was something that's kind of on um, the two Alex's for the most part, and Derek, and kind of getting. Uh, then getting music for it, the trailer, and so like a lot of those, a lot of the elements of the demo are something that you're just gonna prioritize anyhow with development, mm -hmm. like the feel of moving the char you know moving the character around and uh, being able to pick find your scythe 
so you gotta be able to punch first, you know, it's like stuff that was already gonna be in the game anyway, you just kinda like move it forward in the mm -hmm. priority list so that you'll have it ready for when you wanna make a demo. But the demo, we were worried about, um, it's, it was the, like the question was, how do you give people a, a, a real taste without spoiling uh, the final game? Mm -hmm. And the solution was to take areas that had been removed, kind of tighten them up, maybe. And this isn't something I had to do, obviously. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not developing the game in this way. Uh, or my role doesn't allow me to, you know, partake in this sense. But it's like, yeah, it, it provided us with kind of a unique opportunity to give to fulfill oh, yeah, our, this guy. our backers. Uh, the beta build backers, you know, fulfill our obligation to them, and also, you know, of course, from my perspective, we have a oppor we had opportunity for another stronger marketing beat than just like just another trailer, quote unquote, mm -hmm. um, at the anniversary, and it's something that we can use, you know, um, when we're potentially talking with uh, other store partners or whatnot. You know, it's like here's a here's a demo for you to play, get a sense mm -hmm. for the game. And but yeah, it's uh, it's an opportunity to sort of target some things in development, but then also um, you do have to, I, the sense I got was that of course since it was uh, areas that aren't going to be in the final game, I guess from a developer perspective you might feel like hey we're spending some time doing something that's not going to be in the final game, but really a lot of it will be. It's primarily just the areas you mm. know um i guess dialogue maybe yeah subject to change but that's a quick change you know it's just text and what's your so, approach on i thought they were gonna do voice like, hacking though. how do you how do you gather feedback from the you talk about is it voice like hacking. just watching people play it or do you like is there yeah that's the that's the best way um there's comments coming in from the kickstarter backers watching people play is huge uh and and then just play i mean i i played the heck out of the demo myself. I still haven't 100 percent it. I'm at 91 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I gotta play more and <laughs> knock that 100 percent out. It's driving me nuts. Uh, but it's yeah, watching people play is probably the best way because you can kind of see when you when you're developing a game and you I'm done develop an era, you kind of have expectations for what people will what you want them to do, like you set it up, like okay, they're gonna. I mean, Shell's want them pretty to see hard. The secret up like, here because they're gonna walk this way or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I have double health. And I'm then good. if they miss it, then you're like, oh, I gotta do something more to like five, make them realize that secret's five there. Health. Like I'm it should have been more obvious or something. You know, just little I'm things. Supposed to like, four. Are it's the way players better. seeing and doing what you are intending for them to be seeing and doing? Yeah. You and know? sometimes it's nice to have people miss things as well. Like, a lot of the most memorable True, yeah. experiences in, in games are, like, finding something that it feels like you didn't mean to be, to discover. Or, like, it wasn't, it was meant to be, like, hidden. And you, you found it. Makes the, it all feel, like, a bit more alive. Uh, and I feel like I, you made a pretty yeah. good balance for that. Like, um, and that's something that Hollow Knight excels with as well, right? That feeling of, of wonder and discovery. And I really felt that in the Crowsworn demo, even though it was just a taste of the game. I think um, yeah. <laughs> it gives... That's like, good. As someone who backed it, at, and as someone who was excited for it, uh, that I feel like it was it was the best way to, to show, like, yes, this is what we've made. Uh, like, you, you can have faith. Not that I didn't have faith in it, like, before. But it's like yes. Mm -hmm. Now, now I know. I've played it. You know exactly. I know what it's to good. Expect. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And now I just want more of it, and I'm gonna a... patiently wait until that day comes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get to showcase the what you how you expect the game to play, but also what is there to do. Like, mm -hmm. will there be will there be secrets? Will there be a sense of exploration? Will there be hard bosses? Will there, you know upgrades progression how do all those things pan out and you get you got a taste for how all that's going to work and i think the response has been overwhelmingly positive to uh to this build 
Um, we haven't had a ton of people play it, but I think thousands mm -hmm. uh, have booted it up and played. Uh, so that's a, that's a great opportunity to get feedback early on. You know, uh, normally you would, as an indie developer or a developer, you would like try to get your game into a show. You know, <laughs> if you want that kind of feedback, some kind of some kind of event where you can have a booth. You guys did that as well, right? With play. the um, the mm. boss demo or something similar to that for... Oh, uh, I didn't mean an event like... Oh, I don't mean like... A, oh, you mean like a, a convention event. or something. Like, like a convention, yeah, exactly. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, where, where people can walk up and you can watch them play. Uh-huh. Wa just because watching people play, is it does tell you a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, what, like in the process of them playing, you can see things real time when people send you feedback after they're done playing. You know, they won't, you're just not going to remember everything, you know, all your input or whatever. So I think watching someone is, there's an advantage to that. Although I would recommend people, if there's any indie developers out there who are kind of like, I'm going to pay thousands of dollars to <laughs> get, get my game at a convention so I can watch people play it. That's one aspect, one, one benefit from, uh, going to a convention like that but really you should be you should be going to an event like that in order to well getting feedback finding new <coughs> fans is another small part and do both but i think the biggest benefit to doing do both. that kind of thing is to making new potentially new partnerships or relationships with uh you know whether it be valve microsoft nintendo mm -hmm. what have you like make an effort to get your game seen by a big partner um in that sense or maybe merch there's merch everywhere go talk to merch people see if you can you know partner up that that's probably it's to me like uh the first priority if I'm, if I'm going to a convention is to go chat with folks in the in the know so to speak and another like one of the really r random and exciting things that you guys did for the uh, the kickstarter <laughs> that i thought was really silly and I, I gathered some questions from some of my content creator friends today for the interview. Not all of them uh, had time to think of a, a question that they wanted to submit, but I asked a few people. Uh, and I had a question from Scurry, and they wanted me Scurry. to ask you, uh. how did Crowcart come about? Like, how... <laughs> Crowcart! I forgot about that. Where did that come from? You know? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, Crowcart was... Gosh... It was almost like a, a game jam situation with the team. Like we were talking about game jams earlier, how you can learn a lot and mm -hmm. experiment and all that stuff. So, I mean, I don't know how it came about. I think that they posted that right after I, they posted the first kind of joke <laughs> crow cart image right after I joined the team. And, but then they just took a week and we're, and we're going, yeah, let's just make a crow cart if we can do it and make like a silly video from that and it and it was looking pretty rough until like the final i woke up on the day they were gonna tweet and it was like like there look at it now and it's like wow this looks great like <laughs> how did you guys do that and it was playable and we could race each other and it just kind of became like a team meme or something i want to play mm -hmm. that something so fun. bad um, we're like know, all pro other being pro, like pro <laughs> yeah, slow not right now. Pro mo. Uh, it was like you did end up giving it to all the backers, right? It's not like yeah, that. it was. <laughs> that was another one of those. What do we that, give? That, that was a really you know, nice it. little thing. Also, <laughs> speaking of memes, you mentioned and unworthy memes. too. Uh, I'm gonna teach you something, chat. Uh, pay close oh, attention, oh and I need you all to uh, play along here. Okay. Uh, please my in the chat. Gamma pause. Opening brackets. Uh, one of those straight lines that are like a slash but straight you know straight up vertical vertical bar eight seven. Oh, it forms a little crow guy yep uh, what the curly bracket. oh oh, oh, boy. oh wait. wait they're getting it they're getting it they're oh we're getting some yeah there, there you go there it, it is it's a bit weird with the font he, he has a different hat today uh <laughs> depending on Open bracket or it's a little crow bracket. guy. Yeah. You get like a <laughs> no way. He's speaking wearing of, different kinds uh, of hats. Speaking of important things regarding. Crow, but the chat fix perfectly uh, when I exit. I like, have a very important question to ask. I tab uh, out. And I need you to 
Or Promise to answer do... yes or no. I just uh, want a yes or no answer, okay? Oh, boy. Uh, is the crow protagonist's name John Crowsworn? Yes or no? Oh. No, oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the hesitation. I like the hesitation. Hmm. Well, me, I just tend to, I tend to err towards not confirming or denying anything. Just, mm. like, let people speculate. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice... He, he's, he's teasing us. He, we don't know what to think. Is he lying? Is yeah. he... I guess he can be... I think he's lying. Is he Crossworn? lying? He is yeah, lying, no, actually. Us, you know? That's what I'm going to say. I'm tired. Stop. Protagonist. We're calling the protagonist. Uh, Quote among protagonist. Yeah. Oh my Someone god. And we were like, oh, that's good. That is a pretty good one, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna stick with John Crowsworn though, because I think it's funny. Okay. <laughs> it, makes, it makes it makes me think of John Wick. Like a like a. Well, they are both know. pretty cool, right? So. Yeah, like a hero in an action film. John. <laughs> John Crowsworn. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Joe Stenger. Oh, there you go. It's all coming together. The, he hasn't done the, the Markov voice. Why is it? Do, do a Markov voice. Uh, so, um, I guess the I only want Markov voice. I want <laughs> Markov voice. So I want Markov voice. So dumb. I think. I think. Um, yeah, I think we've covered uh, like. Uh, one of the questions I saw people asking was like, "When when is it coming?" And we I we talked about how since the Kickstarter was really big, there's like, Life Flood and the thing. We need now, to. Right? We're not gonna release this game till it's ready, till it's just it's Chef's Kiss, you know. So we're gonna take the extra mm -hmm. time, keep updating the backers because obviously we're sort you know beholden to them in a way. Like we we need to make sure there he is. There's a little key they're creature getting a product. Uh, at the end of the day, and make and uh, fulfill, Wait, like, like I said before, our obligations to them. Uh, but yeah, we we there definitely want to kind of back away from oh yeah, December 2023, and mm -hmm. say you know when it's done. Yeah, I think I think that's sensible, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, even as backers <laughs> and as people who are excited, you. Uh, like the the thing that we're excited for is well it's the game but the game is a product of the developer's ability to really follow their vision for what mm -hmm. that is exactly so that's exactly it i think people are more than happy to wait uh, uh okay you're in mid there for some reason like it, it's not even even aside from a perspective of is the game good or bad or whatever cuz that's subjective right but to really let you guys you know get your vision out and this is relevant for everything uh yeah absolutely the the kickstarter is that's exactly that's a great way to put it the success of the kickstarter means that the sort of idealistic ver vision for the game can be realized My now back itches. Of, uh, Why if it does hadn't do that? done if the kickstarter hadn't gone off like it did um then you have to like start cutting corners to you know in a sense uh, prioritizing certain things over others and so you know okay we can get crow sworn out as an idea in a sense but maybe not the the perfect uh, uh perfect idea of what we we're hoping to make from the beginning so just like so now we're we're in a spot where we can do that and you know uh it's pretty exciting yeah let's wait that's a little awesome longer. like uh the game's looking really good now, and uh, I don't know. We're all we're all <laughs> excited to see where it where it ends up going. I suppose. Thank you. Uh, whenever it does release, you know. Uh, yeah, you guys can fun. check out uh, like wishlist crossword and everyone. Uh, uh, I think, yeah, I don't know. If, I, I feel like it's gonna have a release yeah, date. I might have forgotten. Before we might have been Silk Song right before has one. The, uh, I'm gonna try before it. Silk Song. Uh, <laughs> There's no link. There's no link. Uh, wait, hold on. I'll grab it. I'll grab it. This will this will ruin the. Wait, th no, I can't do it here. This is gonna leak our DMs, uh, or my DMs with like everyone. And I have like a weird crop. On oh there. yeah, don't do that. I can type. You can go to crowsworn.com and there's a thing that says wish yeah. list on Steam if you want to go. Wait, to hold on. I can just go on my phone. Oh, oh, someone's uh, got you. I don't have any money. So, 
Curse Worn. Wishlist Curse Worn. It's cool. It's like, um, imagine here again with the, the comparisons. That's uh, okay. Hollow Knight no, meets Bloodborne meets, uh, cool, Devil May uh, Cry. With you. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, you know better than I do. I have not <laughs> played Devil May Cry, uh, but I definitely feel well. I haven't pl I haven't played Devil May Cry either, but I think I understand like mm -hmm. the sort of chaining cool moves together and yeah, that kind of at, like bayonet. I don't see that combat. part really. It's already wishlisted. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everybody. Mm -hmm. Close one. The cool, yeah. cool gothic uh, Hollow Knight thing, which is good and looks awesome <laughs> and sounds awesome. That's one of the my biggest praise so far with uh, the Cross One demo, is the uh, the sound design. Like everything just sounds so oh, yeah. so beefy. You know the impacts really get sold on that. So whoever whoever did the audio design, uh, y you can send them a uh, Blue SR seal of approval seal of approval yeah. for me. <laughs> nice, uh, a stain of approval. Would you say? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't mind. I'm just I'm teasing. Um, it's an inside joke with the team. Oh. So that right. when they hear that, they're going to chuckle. Um, <laughs> what? It, basically, uh, that was a Got big... Inside jokes um, about that was Blue a big SR. part of getting... Like, basically, Diablo 4 came out, and the <laughs> team was kind of like, wow, this sounds so good. You know, how it plays, that's another... You know, that's another topic. But it sounds great. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like... How do we make our game sound like this? So there was like a huge overhaul to the audio sort of system and whatnot to Crowsworn prior to getting the demo together. And so, uh, yeah, that's what you're hearing. It's a ton of work went into overhauling and perfecting mm -hmm. the audio. And there's a lot to it. Like when you have six different sound effects going on, which one is the most important one that you hear? You push that one forward, you push the others back, you know, which Because otherwise it get, like, gets like, really cluttered. Like, yeah, you'll get cl it'll just be mush, you know, mm -hmm. and they did a ton of work. It's I, it's not something I've really di dove in, uh, dived into uh, in coding, um, but I can see why it would be important in a in a game like Postform where there's, there's just a lot going on. There's mm -hmm. music happening when you get in a fight. Then like the, the, a part of the track will come up, come forward like the drums or something. You have that plus the sounds of the enemies, sounds of your heal getting recharged. You know, there's just a lot, and you have to kind of create this AI that decides which one should be prioritized over the others. You know, there's just a lot to it. And then how quickly and how, you know, it's almost like mixing music. I mean, it's a lot like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And it, it really, it's really important to be like for the gameplay to be supported by the audio as well. That like you can hear the important things, as you mentioned. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. And I got oh another good question regarding Quosworn. We're not quite done here. There's a few Someone's more questions oh. that we got from the the viewers. Um, okay. A big oh, one yeah. is uh, console releases, and I, I was wondering if you had. I haven't like looked into this at all so uh, i'm wondering if you have any insight to give on whether it will be on uh, what consoles at launch or anything like that if there's anything that you can say about that at this point in development oh uh, well i think the kickstarter they're definitely gonna be on de multiple consoles um, just know whether or not essentially confirmed that you know, playstation we nintendo the xbox the Post one on all like game boy all like every console ever don't know what platforms will be available by the time we Mm -hmm. Launch. Makes so it was kind of like PS six. It was like, you know, we want to release it on PC, Steam, Mac, Linux support, and then Nintendo and Sony, and Microsoft will have to look at what's going on in that. You know, sometimes new consoles come out. Um, hey, there it is. And we're not. We haven't confirmed yet if we're launching everything all of at the, the same day yet mm -hmm. uh, might be like PC slightly before all the consoles or something yeah once again we do have to remember that you guys are a pretty small team like we're talking yeah in the team here team. Uh, yeah yeah so is a smaller like, team than whether team share, you, though. you would do the ports yourself like in studio or you uh, 
have another like studio team up with you to do it it still takes like a lot of time and it's a big endeavor especially if it's like a lot of platforms uh, mm -hmm. so right yeah uh, yeah all that takes time so I guess the, the the conclusion is that you're optimistic about uh, console releases either immediately or along the line after development. yeah I'd say so because we're the, the game uses unity and unity kind of has it has support for all those I systems. thought Uni you know, was like, not like a, you still, there's still like work to do but it's not like crap on. You're having you don't have to rewrite the game or, right you don't have to like use a different engine to like bad games are made on Unity you know, that's, that was like the Unity just will, thing will produce an executable that can run on no, I'm consoles. seeing just like good games honestly so that saves you a huge headache yeah right there. <laughs> like, you know the potential is there like right off, right off the bat that sounds convenient Big, uh, okay. Oh yeah. Because I don't know when I when I imagine porting something, all. I always imagine like, I mean, there's there's obviously like the the issue of performance because consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like if you want to make something run on the Switch, you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> but yeah, I think the Switch has some has uh, less RAM. Uh huh. Is the bigger. You have to do a lot concern. of problem solving. Yeah. For that. But. You know, we're, we're confident we'll be able to... I mean, optimizing a game to run on Switch means you're optimizing it for... Everywhere. Else, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the... Generally. Uh, when, uh, I guess my, my frame of reference here is Hollow Knight once again. When Hollow Knight released on the Switch along with the Lifeblood update, the game started running like, yeah. a lot better. The Lifeblood update was like the life super... Blood was Oh my god! Super big for uh, performance for yep. Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it essentially was. That with the mm. uh, well, they added Hive was... Knight and uh, a few right. Things, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was mainly like uh, cleaning up uh, some things. That's when Jack Vine joined the team, right? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we got it optimized for the optimizations for that we were doing for Switch, we sort of passed on to the PC release through Lifeblood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that sounded kind of weird to say, like if you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> the Lifeblood <laughs> like, of horn. development. Yeah, yeah, like talking about Lifeblood. No, we're talking about the Lifeblood updates, patch 1.3 uh, in Hollow Knight. It's because I did bad on Umu. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, yeah, that that's Prosworn, I guess. Uh, Wishlist Prosworn, if you're interested, it's very cool. Yeah, we'll give us a follow. Uh, and and the there's a lot of updates on the Mongoose Rodeo Twitter. Oh um, yeah, oh, yeah. let account. me get a link to that one second. If uh, uh, if you're if you're already wishlisted and you just want to see updates, nah, that's something progresses. Team that's Cherry the best, fans not place to not hear at all. Anything. They post a lot of you still like to this day you post a lot of screenshots. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the Twitter. Uh, and I, re I retweet Twitter. all those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the left Twitter is pinned in the the pinned message on on oh, stream. Okay. Um, so like that's that's probably the best way to keep up with him. Yep. Uh, I think there's that's where you're the most active. Uh, and I guess now a lot of people have been shouting it for many many hours in chat. I guess now mm -hmm. let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, Talking about what? What are you? What are you talking about? The big hornet-shaped elephant in the room, <laughs> <laughs> so to say. Uh, so, I want to preface this by saying, uh, first of all, I, we're all really excited for Silk Song, and I know there's a lot of things that you can't share, and I won't be invasive or ask any prying questions because, you know, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, that way, you know, development is complicated, and you guys have an approach. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna force anything. I, I don't I'm not ah, I can't speak I'm not gonna you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna prize what I'm saying uh, But okay. there was one topic regarding Silk Song that you seemed interested in sharing a little bit more About and around mm -hmm. I guess and that is the the delay quote-unquote. Uh, I don't really know what yeah. to call it So how did that come about? What was the process? Yeah, what's, of uh, what's going deciding on? to what's going on there? do it announcing it when what's you going did on? and I don't know. Just, I'm speak as much as you want about it. I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those uh, topics that, well, essentially, Blue reached out to me 
earlier this year about doing an interview and at the time I knew I, I well I shouldn't say I knew but I suspected we were going to have to announce a you know a delay like the game that the game wouldn't come out by June 12th which was kind of the expectation that was running around mm -hmm. in the the fan circles so I was kind of like well let's do let's Xbox wait to do for saying that until April or whatever May April, they can May. sue Xbox and, and like then, they haven't um, thinking that we might hop on a call after that tweet went out and talk about it but the response was very supportive and positive uh, to that tweet <laughs> not to mention widespread <laughs> like I kind of I just did not expect it to go sort of viral like that mm-hmm but uh, hey, I got like a lot of likes and like a lot of comments the went out. The game's not going to be coming by June 12th, 10th, 12th, uh, 12th, I think. Yeah, well, man, June 12th keeps coming up over and over again with Holiday. <laughs> kind of a weird, uh, you know, coincidence. But um, what was that essentially, mean? it went down like we were 2025, about, like, June 12th. Before E3 in 2022, I'm calling and it. they just asked, you know, are you guys planning on releasing in the next 12 months, or you know, by this time next year? Or it was obviously it was before E3, and we're just kind of like, yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's the plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I think uh, then you have this, I don't know. Uh, I'm just a marketing guy. I don't know. This message go out. Kind of turned into a release window, although, you know, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but it's interesting you know, because started. you never confirmed it, right? And sure, right. My my assumption from that, uh, I'm obviously gonna let you share the Team Cherry perspective, I suppose, was that the way you guys do things is that you, pro like, if I were you, I would probably want as much flexibility as I can, especially yeah. if I'm yeah yeah if I'm Team Cherry and. You know, as they like to keep adding things and, you know, work on the game and have new ideas and, I don't know, you know. Um, yeah, you want to, you, that's true. You, like, and I've said that in the past, that you want to, you, you don't really want to announce a date until you know for sure. And so, um, you know, this is something we were hoping to meet, but as the time drew closer it was kind of like okay we need to let you know we probably need to let folks know in some in some way and and since we're not we weren't sure how widespread uh, i don't know if widespread is the right but how much people were really expecting it mm -hmm. we were kind of like oh you know matt since i'm kind of i'm an official source for the team you know we don't not everything comes out through my twitter but um you know what i say can be taken as from the team, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll do a tweet, and the people who are really paying attention, which are like the ones who would watch an E3 show and catch the June 12th thing, they'll see they'll see my tweet and you know get the message. Uh, but again, the it was very everyone was very supportive. It was um, <laughs> what's going on? Why does the chat say pet the mods? Yeah, my mods are my mods are doing their best here. They're holding back uh, a wave of uh, oh song no. clowning. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I I don't know what to say. Man. This was something yeah. we had to do, and and. You know. At what point did you decide this? Was it like right before the, uh, the, the the that you announced it, or was it something? I mean, obviously you would kind of have a feeling about it, but like at what point did you decide to not? Or to you know make that announcement, I suppose. That's uh, amazing. I don't know. It kind of was just like uh, in the conversation, mm -hmm. and it was like, okay, time to do it. You know, it wasn't. Yeah, wasn't and I like think a from really planned thing. from the community side of things, we all really appreciated that. A lot of people. I mean, I don't think that many people really at that point believed that the game would come out within that period anyway. Uh, but it was really nice to hear uh, about it. I guess that you know. Just like a heads up. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I will, well, I just want to assure everybody that 
the game is still in development. Okay. It's got a, it still has, you know, work to be done. Like we said in the tweet, the team is working on it. it, it it's it's going to come out. It what is even going on? I don't know if there's some people who think it doesn't exist. It does. The game. I started another playthrough earlier this week. Yeah, uh, playing like the that. game. So, you know, um, I don't have any soul. You know, I don't want to touch on that too much, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm playing the game. There's a game there, <laughs> so it's coming. Why don't the spice wait. her? Are you enjoying? It? Like, is that is that too much to ask? Oh boy. Well, of course I'm enjoying it. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. People are gonna take any sort of like reassuring words that they that they can. So. Uh, yeah, it's a great job. <laughs> <laughs> It's a great job. I'm blessed. <laughs> it sounds like a, a pretty great job, yeah. Um, yeah. There's some ups and downs with it. You know, there's some. There's obviously stressful times in game development. Mm -hmm. Like we talked, we touched on earlier about like when you're launching a game, it's really stressful. Or there's when you're, I don't know, talking to huge companies about bringing the game to their console or whatever. There's you oh, know there's stress about sly. that. Why? bug fixing bugs or optimizing you know things post launch whatever what have you uh it's fine and, we got this uh, just worry being worried about the reception yeah of for sure your game or what or a tweet that you put out but um it's still i mean i wouldn't rather i i love it, I love it in, <laughs> in indie games mm -hmm. so and another yeah, thing, like you mentioned here. challenges, like for one, there was a major global health crisis during the middle of development. Yeah. So, like you, you had to figure yeah, out yeah. how to make things work during that time and stuff. Well, so the indie teams I work with, for the most part, are kind of remote mm -hmm. working. So, you know, when you're just working from home, it doesn't. You don't lose your stride too much. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and I guess with Team Cherry, there's so happens. few people that you know. Right. Yeah, you have a you can, small team. You can team. keep the office realistically. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, or you can, or if you have an office, you can just kind of like, okay, we'll, we'll take the computers home. We'll work from mm -hmm. home temporarily or what have you. So, um, it's not like a electronic arts or something. It's got yeah. Where you have to people. shut down like everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, I don't think that. I think we're in a good spot to handle a, a situation like that. I think indie teams in general should be okay with, uh, you know, working at home. I forgot. Yeah. I, another thing that I guess I wanted to touch on. I'm not. I'm not gonna ask too much about Silk Song because I understand like there's a lot of things that you can't share, right? Um, mm -hmm. But. I, I guess on the point of uh, what was I gonna ask? <laughs> I forgot my face cam song. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm don't blanking know. here. I'm blanking here. <laughs> I already got more than I expected for the record. Uh, I'm being spoiled. Oh. We're all being spoiled here. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, spoiled in the Someone sense of you, you know, being lavished oh, with silk song news. Not in the sense. I of... I see. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're... You got more than you're hoping for. Exactly. A lot more. Well, that's this good. is great. <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> another thing is once again, like you guys are a very small team and making a game takes a long time. Uh mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not gonna put words in your guys' mouths, but I guess I guess it's relevant to put into perspective. Like Team Cherry they worked very very like a lot lot during hollow knight's development right because there was like a limited yeah. budget and there there was a lot of self-imposed crunch uh and that's one of the good mm -hmm. things with silk song um is that you know you guys have money from hollow knight now you don't need to like work 15 hour days every day and that's really good mm. like i i hope you guys are genuinely like getting rest and taking breaks what? and stuff like that same thing at, at moments oh, radio uh, if you aren't, you better because uh, I, yeah. I make the rules. You, I, I think. Uh, oh, okay, all right, Blue. I'll I'll relay the message. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think even, <laughs> I think even. Uh, you know how we talked about Crow Cart earlier. Mm -hmm. I think I think even that was kind of a break. That was like a mental break. Yeah. You know, when you're sense. like work, it's because it's such a different idea from 
a Metroidvania, it was like, let's go just do something else, kind of, you know, stretching your legs, but <laughs> with your brain. <laughs> uh -huh. So you just gotta, you kind of just do something different. It's still, still staying sharp, but give your brain a rest and then come back to the game. I think that that's kind of something a team can do mm -hmm. is kind of just uh, step aside and, you know, you still work together. You still have that team. Silk Song Racing Aspect. confirmed? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, okay. No did one someone even say comments. that? Or did... Okay. <laughs> Is that <laughs> real? Yeah, and... Yeah. Um, Why is you on your toes, you know? If, uh, it's very if, if overly offensive about this. I don't, I I don't know. You're probably... I don't know about this. Silk Song is, but you can wishlist Silk Song also at, on Steam or go to silksong.com. Check out some stuff there. But yeah, I think I have a feeling uh, most folks here know about <laughs> Holonate. So they're, they're following you. you know? uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the sure. big ones are for, for people here. If they haven't heard of Crow Sworn, go check it out. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I have another game uh, we're going to announce soon-ish I should I'm afraid of saying the word soon now but uh, just got to find the right sort of situation to make the announcement of the game it's another metroidvania Ooh. another one uh, being made by the developers Idaws and Fops who did the game Archvale before so I joined I joined them recently as I said again, the Leth effect yes, any game you yes. touch is gonna be good uh, yeah, we're gonna. So, <laughs> I'm excited to share it with everybody, but there's I, there's only so much I can say without mm -hmm. spoiling yeah. the reveal. So, I can say I'm working with that team. They have a website. They have a, a Twitter. Idaws and Fops. Um, it's a small Twitter. I think they re <laughs> made it recently. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely be sharing something there in the coming months or in the next year, probably. Uh, Sounds but, yeah. interesting. I'm, uh, I'll am i keep my eyes peeled. We'll, we'll all do that. Wait. So <laughs> what? Really? There's still people what? in the chat saying not enough Silksong news. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I'm in a unique position to resolve this. Left, yes or no, are there rocks in Hollow Knight Silksong? Like, on the ground. Rocks on the ground? Yes. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Left, yes or no, is Hornet in Hollow Knight Silksong a reference to the hit 2017 indie game Hollow Knight? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Definitely. There you go. There's a maybe and a yes. Two brand new Silksong confirmations. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> That's what they oh, wanted shit. this whole time? Yeah, you could have just told them about Hornet. I mean, wow, we've okay. never had that officially confirmed that it's a Hollow Knight reference, so I see here you go. Said fog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Silk Song news. I mean, hey, we take what we can get once again. Uh, oh yeah, Silk Song news. You can... <laughs> oh man. What did they upload? They oh, uploaded like the an hour ago. I, the I best. You again, blue. the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The best place to see the news you guys are referring to is Team Cherry Games Twitter. No. Um, or YouTube. It's daily Silk Silk Song news. Like this is uh. By or or. Twitter, I think. There, a blog post comes out, you know, obviously it's gonna pop up there too. So, if you don't have Twitter, then uh, I mean, the Hollow Knight main Discord not has sure. an announcement yeah, channel that true, just relays yeah, the Discord stuff is that you guys a good place announce. Um, if something comes through, it'll be talked about there. So, uh, but yeah, in the you know, I, I don't know what else to say. The next news will will come directly from the team. I don't know where else it would come from. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 But you're the only ones in the position to share anything. Uh, well, yeah, that's not something I'm trying to do, though. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it makes like, sense. We've, Moss we've, gone, we've gone, like, long enough. Someone, someone's probably said uh, that. Like a post where it's like, you know, the next one should be pretty exciting. Mm. Or, you know, I don't know. That's what makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean anything. As as people who are excited for Silk Song, like we're all very excited for Silk Song, but you know, like <laughs> if, if we see anything, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be happy about it, you know. <laughs> um, Someone asked what my favorite bug is. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, I Lay Bug. Manus is pretty cool. What? That's a good pick. They are pretty cool, actually. Yeah, uh, they can, like, turn I pick head, a dragonfly. Kind of look at you. And they're supposed to be like dragon. Like, I think. who doesn't? Who does not like red dragonflies? Um, and yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's. I'm not. I'm not gonna pry anything more about about Silk Song, uh, because. Okay. I don't. I don't. Unless there's anything you want to share that you were like, oh, he didn't ask about this, but I, I had this uh, like, prepared. Uh, no, that's. Uh, that's you know. That's about it for. What can you share mean? Silk Song. Makes sense. Where's oh, the release date? Is X time? Uh, Where's that? Lords, yeah. Another good question uh, that CC had, because I I mentioned I reached out to a lot of creators that I thought uh, this one was a good question, um, and CC asks, "You're in the unique position to be working on three of the most anticipated and beloved games in the genre, in this mm. case being Hollow Knight, Crow Sworn, and Silk Song. Uh, is there anything you've learned while working on Hollow Knight that helped a lot?" With Silk Song or Crowsworn, and is there anything that you've learned working on Crowsworn that helps with Silk Song or vice versa? Hmm. Well, um, I think uh, there 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 is a lot. It's I believe so. <laughs> it, there's too much to even mention, but mm -hmm. when you work on uh, a big hit, you uh, just a lot more sort of just kind of flows in your direction, and it becomes instead of you going out there proactively seeking new opportunities there it becomes more of a i need to pick and choose which opportunities we want to take advantage of like it's, it's just all it's just a different feel i mean i'm still very proactive in how i look for things just because that's kind of how i am as a person mm -hmm. uh, but you know that would be like if i go to a convention or, or whatnot i'm gonna go look for opportunities whether it be um you know say there's like a board game company out there and i like the game they made it's what? like oh i'm gonna make contact with them in case one of my games in the future decides they want to make a board game version or something mm -hmm. um uh but but then again we probably i probably have seen you know 20 different emails of board game companies saying we'd love to make a <laughs> holiday board game or something like that yeah uh, so well, it's like, board game. Do I really need to go I don't hunting know. as much as I used to? Probably not. It's more like filtering uh, out stuff. Right, like exactly. This. Instead of the hunting for it, it changes. you become like a, a, a funnel or a filter. But, um, yeah, yeah, just uh, learning about uh, localization and... Um, What's on Discord? Kind of learned about setting up what they call marketing beats, you know? Instead of just constantly pushing a game out you can kind of chill a little bit and then try and hit a big moment mm -hmm. um and uh i think that focusing on beats uh like momentary big events or big instances of pushing a game is better for small teams as well like of course you should um if you're excited about your game you know and you got something cool you just made or whatever you could tweet it and whatnot and get eyes on it but um trying to like bunch the, together your marketing yeah if you efforts could bunch into like a right burst yeah. right i suppose oh, a burst yeah there you go maybe that's a better word Beat, beats kind of like the mm -hmm. the old school term but like a marketing burst is kind of i feel like a better path to take uh, with uh with indie games yeah that makes a lot of sense, and I guess that you also end up learning, like you, as you, as you've had experience, like the the contacts that you're familiar with, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. Familiarity. Oh, yeah, the soul binding was easier an than the nail binding. That, that stuff for always keeps improving and developing. I think I actually uh, like actually mm -hmm. focus more on using my nail. Oh yeah, that using my you, time wisely. Once you've worked on a bigger game, you just like you know you start having I don't know, just going out there lines to sort of, I don't know if you want to call them important contact. You get those contacts, like you're talking about. It's like networking, mm -hmm. they call it. But you're networking, and like you can do, you can network, but you can also, like you have to be careful who you're networking with. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, like it's easy to fall in the trap of, like I'm meeting all these people in the industry, but uh, y there's 
people who you should be trying to meet more so than others you know like you could very well be like i know all these game developers but what is that actually going to do anything for your team in the end mm -hmm. knowing a bunch of developers because like i mean generally not you know it's just fun to go to a, a game developers conference and have a bunch of people there that you can go to dinner with but, but that's about all you get from that yeah you know I, i'm saying that in a cold way but it's it's if your goal is to go to an event in order to network and gain contacts just yeah prioritize the ones that um that you know will help your your team and the growth of your team or even just if a problem comes up you have an option like say um say i was like okay we might need a team to help us port crow sworn in the future mm -hmm. well i might look i might start asking studios you know who are producing similar kinds of games i might be like you guys use unity and if they do then it's like well um you know give me your information and maybe we'll talk later maybe you can help us with some porting if, like if they had done a console version of their game before you know so just like little things like that that you know uh can really pay, pay out uh in the future are probably the more important uh systems or of networking that you want to that you want to do mm -hmm. but anyway now i'm starting to now i'm starting <laughs> to get into like the weeds here or whatever mm -hmm. i do think <laughs> it's nice though that that there's like some developer advice in sight that because uh i mean you know we're talking about the games but this interview is just as much about you know you as a person and yeah. your experience with these things and your unique perspective so I, I don't know. I, yeah, I think it's interesting. This interview about Matthew sharing. Griffin is mostly about I know, Matthew I Griffin. Feel, uh, like you need to, like, which is not what I was, uh, I was here lot, for. Uh, not thing, talk but... about all the dev stuff. So I feel and, like that's probably what the yeah. that's probably what an interview with me normally. That's like the normal route that would be mm -hmm. taken if I hadn't been working on <laughs> yeah such well known games. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Crossworn just had a big update. It's something I felt like you know there's a couple different things i could touch on with an interview as well as just kind of a, a little bit of background on my journey into indie game in case there's folks out there who are listening to this now or later that are kind of like yeah, i'd like to get into indie gaming what you know what should i do um this is one possible route is to learn to program and start making your own project yeah and you know you use that as a springboard to learn to yeah learn meet other like-minded folks i thought that was your job start full teams right. and maybe you're gonna find some people who are talented yeah. but you don't really vibe with them there you go there's a is that a zoomer thing or vibe, vibe with yeah them? i suppose yeah okay <laughs> vibe and yeah. i use if it's, it's on the sink then me is explain the zoomers okay. do use it you have a good vibe oh i just earned a subscription badge oh someone gifted you a sub <laughs> <laughs> thank you but um yeah, you just once you find people you really what's click with, what's then going on? see if you can build from there. You know, it's uh, I don't know what else to say about getting into game development, but it should be something you want to do, and you and you can pretty much go and do it. Uh, you have the will to do it, as uh, someone was saying recently. You know, you gotta have the will. Mm -hmm. It's a big part. Of, it's it's a it's a marathon to a game launch from start to end, you know. So it, it's, uh, willpower is just as important as talent in that regard. Makes sense, makes sense. Why is everyone posture checking? How did they yeah, know? Yeah, I'm, try I'm trying to, <laughs> people are spamming the thing. <laughs> I, I disabled <laughs> the reward, sorry. Listen to the mods, chat. <laughs> like we were, we love to have you here. But it would be nice if you experiences to my one thousand viewers for your first time. Readable and nice, so that we can get questions through that might be interesting for <laughs> uh, So yeah, shout out to my mods, by the way. They're amazing. Yeah, they're, they're making mods a are... really, really valiant effort to combat all the, uh, okay. the, uh, I guess the. Uh, entitlement that Spam. comes regarding oh. some of the the games that Leth works on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pet the mods. That's yeah. funny. I haven't heard that before. Which brings us to uh, the uh, Zoomer 
lingo lesson I was gonna teach you. Oh, and this no. is very okay. relevant to Hollow Knight Silk Song. So I, I, I need, I'm gonna teach okay. you how to do your job here, uh, because <laughs> right. I am definitely qualified to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you know, a lot of people, uh, they feel a need to tell you how you should do things, and uh, uh -huh. they they feel like they you know, maybe they're want maybe they're curious, maybe they're feeling frustrated with uh, you know, the silence or whatever. Uh, which uh -huh. you know, that's that's fine, I guess. Uh, but here's the yeah, thing. That's understandable. Yeah, that's understandable. But here's the thing, Le. Uh huh. Here's what you tell them. You say, "Okay, let us cook." That's what you tell oh, them. Well, so this okay. is it's they say well, to cook is basic. You know, to do your thing. This is something the Zoomers say. So if anyone's like Le, where the hell are the Silk Song news? Why why aren't you telling us anything about the game? When's it releasing? You say, hold up, stop a second, let us cook. We're cooking. Team Cherry is cooking. They're making a delicious five course, 15 mm. Michelin star meal for us. But you know, some <laughs> meals just have to, you know, sometimes you make one of those really, really good meals where you the, the thing has to like pressure cook for overnight or something. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that's I feel so, like so, they so set the degrees to food, you know? 100. And you guys are the chefs. But and I forgot thing, it was in the oven. You gotta let the chefs cook. So whenever on, and it, whenever I'm someone kidding. asks you, you, say let us cook. All right. Okay. Keep that one in mind. That's like a like a stew. It's like better. Yeah. Take your time. Okay. You gotta wait. Okay. <laughs> let us exactly. Cook. Yeah, I've seen. I saw that a lot in response to the the delay tweet. Like, <laughs> let them cook. Exactly. And I was like, there oh, I, I think I get it. See, you're so done right. with the kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I saw it from like a 30 year old guy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe they're down with the kids as well. I don't know. Yeah. Everyone, you know, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I guess um, they mean, but I just, I, yeah. that yeah, is exactly. not good. Really, truly. Okay. It's always relevant. Uh, I, all right, what else we got? Anything else I need to know? I'm going to read through comments? the, uh, oh, okay. if there are any, uh, questions you should we have a lot of it. questions that came through but that was i felt like we were taking those because we were worried I'm, we might run through the interview too quickly but uh -huh. now it's and we didn't out. we're like three hours no, in didn't. this was gonna be an hour yeah, and whoa yeah so <laughs> i don't know uh, uh maybe let's just quickly uh take a peek oh, shit, i think I we covered a lot PDF. of this stuff too oh no no, but uh, you're, I was talking about the, uh, the questions in the questions in uh, our, our interview chat. The, the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mods are posting. I mean, I feel like uh, we covered um, a lot of yeah the things just coincidentally that people are asking about, and a lot of the things, uh, while they are good questions, are things that. I'm pretty sure that you can't. Uh, thoughts really on Crow Sworn? Tell us much about uh, it. I like it. Breaking NDA or something. I'm pretty excited to play it when yeah, it yeah. releases. Force you to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm just nice like that, you know. I don't. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of these. When I'm scrolling back here, it's. I think they were asked before. We kind of just ended up answering them mm -hmm. sort of organically For through sure. conversation. I do have the Hollow Knight bench in the yeah. backyard. Oh. That's a I question. That. Left. Well, oh, okay. Is the Hollow Knight bench comfortable? Because oh. that's something I've been wondering about a lot. Like, Elder Hollow Knight bench is like a normal bench. And <laughs> it doesn't look that comfortable. Is he lying? Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, is, is Elder Bug... I mean, maybe maybe he's not lying. Maybe he thinks it's comfortable. It, he, do, he doesn't even seem so, to ever sit on it. So I don't know if he really knows Art what he's Our kind of stands, is, is it like, all the time. I've, so we never I've, get tired. It's comfortable in, if you sit a specific way. Wait, what did you say? Like, you have to be very, I mean, you have to have posture, essentially. Like, if you sit with proper posture, it's no, just it's the exact same thing. If you try thing. to, like, uh, lounge in it, it's metal. <laughs> and it doesn't, uh -huh. it doesn't want to let you lounge. So, I, mean, I don't know if that, does that answer the question? <laughs> I guess it does, yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, you can't lounge <laughs> in it. You have to kind of sit properly in it for it to feel mm -hmm. good. It's good for the plushies. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. It's in the backyard. 
Okay. <laughs> the plush is uh, back balancing. Here. Oh, any challenges balancing being a part of multiple gaming teams? I think that's an interesting question. Go um, for it. I I haven't had any challenges there, but I also try not to pick up too many games so that that won't be a, come a problem. Mm -hmm. Like the um, nice thing about your specific position. Like the the job that you tend to take on with game studios mm -hmm. is that uh, you you probably have some say in like probably just like dropping places because like all a lot of a lot of the, the work house. that you yeah, need to do is it. very much around like the release pre and after release of games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess you have the benefit of trying to like attempt to not schedule all of the games. I guess that's kind of brings it back to what you were saying. Uh, about Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That you try to. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I definitely yeah. That that's all. That's a factor too. And mm -hmm. but but so far I don't think. I don't think there's a, a worry about the games I'm on launching simultaneously. So. Um. Someone asked what my favorite game games are. Some of your favorite. Oh. Well, my favorite, my all-time favorite game Hollow is Halo Combat. And God, I'm a child. <laughs> when was that yeah, game released? That, that was 2001, I think. Okay. I was not even close to being born. Games yeah. existed back then? <laughs> so, I don't play Halo anymore, kind of, but kind of I played up. that game, uh, the Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, for so long, and invited friends over to play land parties and what or you know xbox land parties i guess like have like 12 people over and we're all and it was just madness order pizza <laughs> and whatever um i have very fond memories of of that experience and i just felt like that game uh was just so well done and very like it, it uh did a lot of things it was innovative in a lot of ways that it doesn't really get credit credit for like for what instance is that halo 2's matchmaking system was kind of the first matchmaking done ever and now that's just a standard thing in multiplayer games you just get matched up with people who are your skill level and mm -hmm. it's like rare a game doesn't do that and that was halo 2 that did that first um so yeah halo 1 uh i mean there's a lot to it but I used to have a huge list of all the stuff that Halo did first. <laughs> like, I was just so blown away by the game. Uh, but, yeah, I don't play Halo much anymore. It's not the, I mean, it's not Bungie making the game anymore. So, it's kind of like Halo skin FPS. Makes I mean, it's, I'm sure it's still great, but I just don't, you know, I don't get as excited yeah. about, about it. What are you playing right now? What am I playing right now? That you're so like, song. enjoying right now? <laughs> Besides Silk Songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's the big one that you mentioned. That you <laughs> and Crow Sworn last week. And, uh, <laughs> Aside uh, from the ones you're working on, I suppose. Oh, okay, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> let me see. I, I mean, just... I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm teasing everybody. Sorry, right that was a very today, stupid guys. question. I should have <laughs> expected that as an answer. <laughs> I already told you. Yeah. Uh, let me just check my Steam real quick. I saw it see, coming like, a mile I, away. I appreciate you for anyone said anything. Um, I played so. Outlast Trials with the Mongoose Rodeo team. You guys heard of Outlast Trials? You know what that Never is? Never heard of it. It's like a uh, Outlast is like a scary, uh, intense mental institution escape kind of game. Mm -hmm. And it's got a co-op. The Outlast Trials is like a cooperative online idea around that. It's it's pretty tense. It's good. Oh, we gosh. we all really enjoyed it. That's your idea, you got, like. Team relaxation activities, playing yeah, games. Yeah, like, yeah, you gotta Holy help. You shit. gotta, you gotta help each other out. It's tense, you know. You gotta rely on each other. <laughs> team, team building. building. <laughs> yeah, phasmophobia. We were playing for a minute. Phasmophobia. Uh, I love that game. Back when we first joined. I want to play with the friends more. Uh, once the like, team no one wants to play with early me. on, but I was kind of at the sad. tail end of enjoying Phasmo at the time, so we didn't play that too long. But then Seven Days to Die was a, a big. We played that for months. Oh my god, uh, all the team. horror games. I can't handle Seven horror. Days to Die. Oh yeah. Yeah, Kadea said I would quit. I can't with horror. <laughs> yeah, if I if I were in any of those teams and you're like, "Oh, we're going to play horror games." I'm like, "Nope. 
Signing oh, my resignation. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go to bed, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm a coward. I can't do horror games. I tried playing Phasmophobia, and that game was too scary for me. Phasmophobia is like not scary. Phasmo at like little nightmares. That's like a nice level mm. of horror for me. That game's good. Is game. really good. I'm uh, mostly a co-op gamer, so uh -huh. after like uh, maybe three hours of yeah, playing the game, the game is like, not scary anymore. When you when you're just like working on games, like all it's day, not, it's not, it's really not. Like, I don't want to go work on, go play. Uh, single just player stop game, being a truck all day and like just go games, do it. Mm -hmm. Kind of just zone out. Take out your thermometer and go to find the cold room. Like I'm well, not yeah, gonna if go I'm, play. If I'm relaxing, I'm not playing Hollow Knight. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Because that's, yeah. like, I guess kind of my job thing, kind of, ish, hobby. I don't know what to call yeah. it anymore. Yeah, I I am so lazy, Leth. You have no idea how little speedrun practice I do in my free time. Does you call him is... That's not... <laughs> you're just like, that good, naturally. Is no, like, it, 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 if I were to practice, I would improve so much. It's a Hall Knight speedrunner, and that's not the person uh, But I'm too lazy, so I'm not doing that. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, I'm just not. <laughs> yeah so um someone asked if you have uh tips for aspiring indie devs on how to grow or promote their games Ooh, that's i a mean good we kind of we, we kind of touched on that i think for one you have to just make an effort to i think a lot of indie teams don't realize that you could work on a game for years and if you just go well I'll just launch it on steam and it'll take care of itself I mean, True. There's, there's some truth to that in a sense, but, uh, like, uh, I think what you want to do is, is, uh, well, yeah. I mean, you have to find a, an outlet into sort of the streamer space. Like, if you can find streamers who love playing indie games, just experimental games, what have you, um, that just they play everything under the sun like lyric is a mm -hmm. a large streamer who plays just everything um i mean i found out about a couple games from watching lyric play and but what that the tricky part about the, that is how do you contact lyric and say hey check out my game i i feel like if you just genuinely go and start trying to be a part of lyrics um twitch channel and community and you could just casually mention, yeah, I'm working on the game. Can't wait to share it with you, whatnot. It's kind of like this game you played. What you know, if you liked it. So Lyric played you kinda, online before. Uh, have to really put in some time. Oh my god. To uh, just let me hit the jellyfish. Let notebook. me hit the jellyfish. I beg quick. you. Mm -hmm. And and then I don't know. Uh, that's that's how I did it. it was it was a, a genuine what? like let me just play some games with with people uh, and sometimes your first game is a stepping stone to your next hit well, I even... too like you don't always it's not always your first game that it's hornet silk song is oh my god the one that is going to be the banger it needs to you know sometimes you got to go through a game and learn everything that has to do with developing and launching a game so you're better prepared for the next one that is that you'll you know that one will be the big one Oh boy. Okay, wait. Hold on. People are all asking about the blog post comment. No, that was not a confirmation about a blog post. What? Uh, something you mentioned oh. while we talked about Silk Song. I'm no. almost like dead. No, you're reading. Oh, I too think much. I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're reading. He, he yeah. didn't I tease that, a blog that... post. He was just talking about. No, I didn't. About... Yeah. See, not, it's already I begun. Saying... I, I, you know, that's something that I find. Thank God. <laughs> it really I made have, me like, understand no you guys on on such a deeper level. Announcing this interview has made has put all of Team Cherry's silence into such perspective for me, because you know I announced the interview oh, and immediately the right like, way. you, Wrong you way sent me like the link to Reddit left for the Silk Song. <laughs> People are yeah. making like speculations and they're making like conspiracy theories about the interview that like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like if yeah. if I if I were you guys and any time I go out and say anything about anything, even if it doesn't oh have God. to do with uh, like Silk Song or anything work related at all, and then like any time you do that, ten people go and like make articles and theories and all that stuff. Of course, I wouldn't go out in public 
you know, and yeah. say things. Like, I think if I tweeted, like, the sun's coming out tomorrow, <laughs> it, would, uh -huh. it would turn into, like, a... Silk Song release date tomorrow confirmed? Oh my yeah, God. it would turn yeah. into <laughs> something. I don't know. Maybe mm. that's too simple. But I, the, the fans, I'll just say this. Um, we appreciate all the fans. It's like the when pe I understand the, that some people are frustrated with um, lack of communication, what? but what? Um, our like a teams, you okay. know, you need to focus on making a game. That's that's our. Well, job. You probably didn't see that because my that face cams in the way. Or enjoy and um, you know, I like I said, I get it, uh, but even. It's at the point where, uh, and this is a, again a good problem to have, where people are just uh, too excited. Into, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I guess in a sense, yeah, like you want people to be this uh, excited about something you're working on. Um, I've never, I've never oh seen, God, I've been in this situation this before. Uh, you know, I guess maybe that maybe that makes sense though, because it's like when you're launching. A first game from a team you, you typically won't have excitement like, to this degree i mean there are exceptions to that of course uh, but um like it makes sense that like a sequel to a, a hit game would have this much going on but uh all i can say is you know just be patient with us we're working hard and you know we're trying to get this game to you yeah i mean that's that's really all you need to say i feel like i, I think we're all, we're all like we're all excited right and i think uh mm -hmm. most of us I'll, like once again i think it's a small minority like a very loud minority of people that tend to like do all the uh <laughs> harassment and stuff like that uh which is not cool but like i we're all excited for silk song right it's gonna it's gonna be cool uh but yeah i i want there yeah, to I be just... a community environment that is like supportive of you guys where you feel like you can take your time without disappointing people uh because it, it's just nicer that way you know <laughs> let them yeah. cook exactly let them cook they're right back let to it cook. let <laughs> them cook hmm. oh my god yeah it's right there <laughs> <laughs> let them cook exactly it's right there uh let's left, left there i guess that's kind of everything that i had planned uh i suppose but I, I do have oh wait i just saw someone's message there jonathan oh man i'm not gonna say your last name john uh it looks it looks french almost but uh jonathan says weird place to send this but i wasn't able to get through on discord i took over from you recording on lem in the focalized mod and sad as we're not to get the original lamb in the mod as an absolute highlight of my year to get a chance to work with for such an amazing community. Yeah, that's that was also a part of why I didn't want to do it. Because I heard some of the voice actors who were trying out for the parts and I was kind of just like, oh, these guys are so good, I don't even... You know, you don't want me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm yeah, sure I did the voice of the bug... Real lem uh, versus game, but void and fake lem. Way better at this than, Ooh, win. than I am. Um, so I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to do that. You did a great job. Yeah. I was really impressed with the nailsmith. Also, like I didn't even. I didn't even try out for that. I heard. I heard the person that was in the front runner was like, I'm not even gonna try out for this. <laughs> like they sound better. This, that, you know. This yeah, amazing. vocalize was fantastic. Uh, I I feel like those big like fan created projects are they're one of the the pinnacles of like community like it, it's just a, such a showcase of the passion for that we all have for these things uh, oh yeah yeah i'm glad people can do i don't know about uh that's a question that gets asked a lot about team from teams you know it was asked during the crossworn stream like do you support mods or something like that or are you going to add mod support mm -hmm. and we were kind of like we don't know what that means <laughs> you know like we're <laughs> Like you can mod the game if you want. It's in Unity. We don't know what. It, we don't know how to mod games. You know, we're just developing them. <laughs> like, how would you make it easier? We for don't know how to build some make mods, but we know how to like a level entire, editor or something. Like, oh, amazing we're not game. Doing that. 
I don't know. That's, that's just see. a question that gets asked a lot. I don't know what people mean by that. But we're not going to do anything to keep you from modding either. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't know what you'd have to do for that also. Kind <laughs> of, uh, I'm sending you DRM with homework, or... Lev. Uh, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> now you have to play uh, Vocalized and Pale Court because they're amazing. Oh, oh really? At yeah. the same time? No, not, I mean, <laughs> nothing's time. stopping you. I guess they probably function at the same time. Uh, but that that's your oh, homework. <laughs> oh, I, so it sounds like I helped choose who, uh, who Nailsmith was going to be. TC yeah. Yeah, message. I was blown away by um, one of the guys. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the Nailsmith. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but sorry, CC about backing out on i still feel kind of bad about that like i wanted to do it but i was like uh oh. there was just a lot it wasn't just like a simple decision there were a lot of elements to not also like through with that uh, give the other voice yeah, actors a chance I guess. part of it was hearing these other voice actors do a really nice job and being kind of like well they should get the role you know all right well uh i think uh that's I have one more thing, actually, before you go. Okay. Uh, I have a small favor to ask of you, Lev. Uh, okay. And funny enough, uh, I guess the best way to put this is uh, I oh would God. like to ask for you to act as a uh, message crow, <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Um, so I Just want you to send work. a message to all your colleagues at Team Cherry and Mongoose Rodeo. A nice uh, voice actor was spot on. Someone's. <laughs> yeah exactly um sorry go ahead <laughs> yeah so i have a bit of a favor to ask uh okay if you could s relay a message over to the rest of the the people at team cherry and mongoose rodeo uh just just saying oh that God. we're we're excited we're very excited to see uh what you guys are working on uh take your time we're we're gonna be patiently waiting uh and yeah, I hope you're having a good day. Get some breaks as well. And uh, all right, yeah, that's that's really all I have to say. I think, and I feel like thank you, Blue. The the community agrees on that. I feel like I'm speaking for all of us here. Yeah, uh, Blue speaks for all of us. So that... Exactly. And uh, thank you for coming, Leth. It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, that yeah, we were. This thing. feels like it was. You and I were chatting for like an hour before. Yeah. <laughs> we started. So this has like been a, been a long time in the chair. Mm -hmm. Just don't. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. nice to hear your perspective on a lot of these things. Um, and uh, yeah, we ended up going for, you no, know, we were planning for about an hour and a half is what we said before. <laughs> well, and uh, yeah. we are currently three hours and 20 minutes into the stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, new record, <laughs> new record. Yeah, exactly. I think it might be a while before I do another interview. This yeah, is, uh, that makes sense. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all out there now. This interview pretty much covered everything I would want to tell people, you know, with mm -hmm. like uh, getting into games or how I, how I did it. If anyone's interested, I don't think people are really interested, but maybe some folks. Later I think on, it's interesting. Like, how about that guy? Don't to, don't. I, sell I do think it's interesting. Shorts. No, I, I'm not saying it's not interesting. I just think like people don't, you know. I I think I stay well enough in the shadows of things. You wouldn't think to be like, let's go see what Lev has to say about getting into indie games. <laughs> but maybe someday, we'll see. Do a panel or something. Yeah. Uh, but all right, cool, yeah. But yeah, Thanks, everyone, uh, follow Leth on gonna... Twitter, I guess, is the best place to keep up with you. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. And he posts and reposts things that are related to the projects that she's working on uh, there. That's true. I, I do post everything that comes through from yeah. the project. <laughs> on, so, Every um, new asset, you just like, oh. Yep. Twitter new, needs to see this merge one. coming in or the, uh, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> exactly. Um, speaking of merch, I got my Hollow Knight vinyls. What? Just like yesterday. Oh. I don't even own a so vinyl. Bro, even that can white doesn't even yeah, own a vinyl. Out. I'm gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna. Bro, got the Hall Knight vinyls. Don't even own the vinyl. Are we gonna vinyl. see your hand? Oh yeah. Camera? Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. Wait. Um, oh boy. I hope this works. Here we go. Does this work? It's not hand reveal because I'm doing that at a hundred k oh. on YouTube. This is space oh, okay. reveal. Oh. But like, okay. Okay. This is space reveal right now. Well. Yeah, like my profile picture. Like my 
Okay. He's gonna accidentally like leak his face. Oh. Wait. <laughs> also, there's the 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 IKEA rats, by the way. Wait, what? Hold on. What? <laughs> Blue, you're like on camera right now. That's crazy. I know. Give me a second. Okay. Why is uh, this pen out. bad? God damn it. Okay, face reveal, I guess. This is the big reveal, guys. Yeah. See, this is much know. more exciting than Silk Song. Sorry, left. Uh. Damn. I need a better pen. It well, doesn't work. Uh, I can't. No. Wait, we're seeing hand reveal right now. We see both of his hands. I need a better well, pen. Well, he, we, we just... This one's bad. What? You see this? I, I saw blue face. hair, even. Hello. It's, it's me. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. This, wait, hold on. But... Here. Where's your vinyls at? There you go. Look at this. There it is. Well, look at them. They're so cool. Are you going to open them? Do you have a vinyl player? No, I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Look so at that. Like collecting look at that. They're the, so cool. Yeah, look good. Um, and if you haven't seen the insides of them, they're really awesome. They're like the... This one's like the King Soul charm. One side is Void Heart, and the other side is King Soul. It's really cool. And this one is Grim, the Grim Child charm. They're really awesome. Yeah, I, I think uh, we... Know. Yeah, they make... Uh, they make like vinyl... Um, I don't know frames ah. that you can put put those in and mount them on your wall. Blue, you're creeping into the yeah, camera. <laughs> Wait, I miss it. You see my trash can? That's embarrassing. I don't want you to see my trash. Can. Well, there's just there's it. trash in it. Yeah. I mean, that's not expected. Meant to be trash in the trash can. Oh. Uh, I can do this. Hold <laughs> on. A lot of papers. <laughs> yeah, I haven't emptied my trash can. That was all. Uh, what? Blue was uh. Whoa. Oh. What subscribers <laughs> only chat? I'm what? With the like, preparing I'm the camera, what the heck? For like the last week, I'm just like throwing them out. Now I can't Leaders troll. Questions. What the heck? Can I ask? No, that's not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like crumble it up and throw it in the uh -huh. trash. Yeah. You got full of full of questions that never happened. No. Yeah. I think that that was really all of it. Unless you have anything else that you want to How long have we been so, going? I think I'm going to get straight <laughs> to the YouTube cut of this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> or go to bed, yeah, which hours. I know I won't do. Because it isn't uh, 5 a.m. yet. Believe we go uh, for three <laughs> hours. Well, I just want to say thank you, everybody who came to listen to us and for taking a large chunk of your day out, really. I mean, it was a yeah. much longer interview than we were... Uh, Sort of planning. I mean, <laughs> really, it's maybe a better word. I, I was thinking one say. and a half to two hours. Don't say. Um, yeah, everyone who's still here, thank you. Oh yeah, just every like like maybe one we're like gonna one minute thirty seconds. These games oh one can. no one hour games. thirty minutes. And hope to show you stuff in the coming months. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're gonna wrap up, I think. So yeah, bye, Leth. Have a nice. All right. Wait, we'll what time is it for you? Oh, it's like 4 p.m. It's not too bad. All right. Well, have a nice rest of your day then, I suppose. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you for coming. Oh, once again. Oh, it was nice oh, having you. Bye-bye. Not really, but I did them separately, and I got the thing for it, so this, it doesn't matter. Cool. That was awesome. Uh... Whoa. Cool. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel like I I, I didn't panic, which was good, because uh, I was pretty nervous. And yeah, th thank you thank you everyone for coming. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the um, the stuff. I hope you uh, maybe you learned something new. Maybe hey. you feel uh, like you uh, you had your your question answered. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed your time as well. I don't know. Maybe maybe you had a good time as well. Uh, this was a nice opportunity. I'm I'm gonna stay around for a few minutes, and and chat to you. Um. About everything, uh, and if I can give some clarifications, I I feel like I should do my part to not, uh, spawn any more rumors, regarding. Uh, Silk Song and anything, Crow Sworn, whatever. Um, 
You're sharing? Yeah, I know, I know. I just, I can't, I don't have anything else that I can display. Um, so if you want to ask me some questions, oh, this uh, and if you want me to clarify oh, no. anything, then, um, then, uh, Path the mods? Yeah, then you can ask. Go, go for it, you know? Uh, so what did high TLDR, YouTube get I guess deleted? What you're all wondering about? Did you just casually face reveal? I can <laughs> Someone right said now. high YouTube, man. Yeah, they yeah, got deleted. Like, <laughs> left for some left. You think I'm streaming another fucking billion hours after uh, yeah. this? Oh yeah, I'm just gonna start a 112 run. That's a good idea. Wait, where's Wait. the left? <laughs> Be here Unless for years. partnered. Maybe what? I'm gonna be here for years. <laughs> but yeah, if if you uh, fuck it, just PB now. <laughs> Don't even like stream. If you want, if you want any any clarifications on anything. <laughs> Ban request because oh my uh, god, this is how so many people got banned today. Like, it, it, yeah. So for for example, there there is no confirmed Team Cherry blog post. I don't get how people manage to get that out of it. But yeah, there's no there's that that's not happening. Uh, I, for the record, I don't know. I, it was it was nice. Uh, I think it was <laughs> so I, many I feel like messages being deleted. I don't, I don't think it should on the delay and stuff. I don't, I don't think this is necessary. It's more than, the, enough, you know. Why I mean, is it something Alex high Adler's YouTube? We can't tell you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I I think it was nice. And for the record, I got a lot more than than uh, was planned in terms of Silk Song things. Because uh, in my document, I can. I can we got a uh, maybe and, and a yes. With all the yeah, everything you need. So the way the way you I I decide why. I, what happened to my playlist? I mean, not that I dislike Celeste OST. Um, the thing with this document, How's my stream doing? One viewer, that's amazing. This, is that I, I made a draft of all the things that I wanted to cover. And then I sent that to Leth, and Leth could, you know, look through it, uh, remove questions that, you know, he can't or doesn't want to talk about, etc., etc. Uh, so basically, regarding, you can't even see it. You can't even see it. I'll because the fucking crop. I'll make a new window. Uh, put back Discord here. Properties. Uh, uh, where did Discord go? Here. Found it. Uh, basically, it. Where is that window capture? What was he doing? What are we doing? Where am I? Who are we? Here. I'm not. I'm not gonna show the whole document. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. What? This, this is. This is all we had. That was like confirmed to be talked about. So you know. Oh, you wrote the script. We felt a bit generous. We got some more than we asked for. Uh. So that's cool. Thanks, Leth. <laughs> Hell yeah. But wasn't the answer that um, was just like, uh, yeah, we I. Uh, so that, that, we just need more really time. Awesome. Um, okay. That's really questions? added nothing. I mean, not really. Otherwise, it, more for the sake of time than for the sake What's of anything. Missing? And I feel like a lot of the stuff that, that was removed was from the document we ended up talking about. Anyway. <laughs> I'm really sorry for writing the middle of his attendance of life or joke. I'm gonna wrap without up much stream, though, I'm gonna thought go behind the, it. I do now realize how it's sensitive given the uh, chance so of stream. Maybe you don't really care such mind by doing I feel you clarify as much as I was really welcome. The stream out. don't want you to wear spoil uh, that. I might have to cut out some stuff to make it like oh, a your Bro, you're just... Bro. Just focus on... Chill out. The stuff that, I guess is most uh, relevant to Hollow Knight and Crow Sworn and Silk Song. Um, I do want to keep some of Leth's insights on his past in game development and stuff though, because I, I think it's really interesting. Um, but I feel like now maybe is the time to make a VODs channel. I should make a fucking VODs channel at some point. Uh, this is a furry. And yeah, I'm gonna 
even if I don't make a VODs channel, I'm, I'm gonna Wait, have I like know this guy. the whole interview here on my Twitch. I don't know who this uh, guy is, I, but I, like, I like, know this guy. Saved. Uh, also, Leth, by the way, on your stream, I don't think you have it so your VODs get permanently saved. Uh, since you're partnered, they get saved for 60 days by default, your VODs. Um, but if you if you haven't already, like the Chris One Anniversary stream, for example, uh, you need to go into like the video producer and highlight that so that it stays forever. You have to like make a highlight and then it lasts forever. Um, I'm just mentioning just in case, like, because there are, there are things. Um, I guess the the ex the example. I mean, it, it would be nice to like keep those things for the future in terms of like. Uh, hearing about insights during the game's process. Uh, Should I save process. for the like, whole stream? Like, w when the game's already done, like, looking back on things. Um, so Wait, that, that's this? something that you could do if you haven't already. Uh, like, make sure to actually Can you, like, even see that. anything? Uh. <laughs> like, nothing. You can see nothing. I suppose. Um... Sorry, I'm not trying to give you a lecture here, but... <laughs> I'm just, uh, just uh, as a piece of advice from one one streamer to another, I presume. Uh, what was the most interesting Silk Song news? I guess the most interesting thing, well, news is, well, it really is here. News. Nothing we got was news. Um, Holy shit! But it's really? I don't know. We there's a lot. There was a lot of interesting stuff, uh, really, uh, that I, like, for example, the um, <laughs> the process. I I thought the process of like Xbox putting Silk Song in the the time frame uh, was really <laughs> funny, because <laughs> in my mind, are I the thought it was mods like manually bent that like, they had to, like Delino's it. message or is that like but a bot? It, it, apparently, from the way that I heard it described, it was like, oh guys, are you planning to? Like the interview is over now. Here? We can like and, we can and go back like, to yeah. normal. <laughs> I don't know why it. we're. <laughs> so in retrospect, it's kind of silly that we all. Or like a lot of us in the community built like a whole, down whole release date window uh, <laughs> idea around that. Um, but yeah, I, th I think, um, I don't know. I think it's nice. Once again, uh, I'm one of those people that uh, am not too worried about Silk Song news and stuff like that. Like in a lot of ways, Silk Song is like a looming thing on the horizon for me. Because I really am scared of it coming out while I'm in, in the middle of, like, school season or something like that. Uh, wait, mods, can you... Oh, school season. Let, let the chat come through as it, like, in its pure state. Because I'm curious to see how it how it got. So, like, all the... All the keep it like it usually is when I do runs. Just because I'm, I'm curious. Uh... To see if it... I mean, a lot of people left now, probably. Uh, thank you, Shelby. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm one of those people that, like, if, if Team Cherry... Uh, I want to know that they're, they're, they're doing well and that they're... I guess... Here's the thing. Them working on the game is enough for me. Is kind of where I'm at. Uh, is a dog I feel in like the I chat? have a different what? Where? Uh, opinion than a lot of other people. And I don't want to impose my opinion upon the entire community in that regard. Um, it's, it's like, you know, no, no one I don't know, barked. as long as you're working on the game, I'm really happy, uh, and, uh, well, even if they're not working on the game, they can take a break from it if they want, um, just don't release it when I'm in the middle of my exam season, thank you, thumbs up emoji, I mean, how's chat fine, I have no control over that, uh, it'll probably be fine, um, but yeah, Thank you all for coming. Only me, so wait, what? If you don't know me, um, once again, I'm Blue. I'm a Hollow Knight speedrunner. Way more I than me, Super Dasher in this chat. With, uh, Leth or Team Cherry. This was a very one-off thing. I would love to do it again. Don't get me wrong. Uh, if, if <laughs> Ari, William, Jack, Chris, hit me up. Mm. I I would be super down for that. Probably won't happen. Um, but um, entire <laughs> interview. Yeah, maybe maybe we do. Like, maybe I, I can push for a teaching left speedrunning stream. That would be such good YouTube content. Just like, oh, I taught a Team Cherry member a Hollow Knight speedrun. Oh my god, I can already imagine. <laughs> That'd be good content. 
uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm joking. Um, I, I, I thought it was interesting to hear his perspective on things, and I, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like my thoughts on the, imagine the views, I mean, it's not about the views. It's, it's not about that. Uh, I feel like, in general, <coughs> focusing on success and views as like a metric for your own success is a really unhealthy... It, it, it leads to a really unhealthy... I, I think we can end stream. Operation. Like, interviews over, and that's all we came for. We only need to watch this guy's like entire uh, stream. For my stream yeah. content. Also, thank you to my mods. <laughs> uh, you did a fantastic job. So. Uh, chat, if you feel like the mods were a bit extra harsh today uh you can put that fault on me and not on my mods uh because i told them to because i i didn't want to embarrass myself in front of leth and have my entire chat be like silk song clowning and like being like really rude and impatient uh especially because i don't know it, it I, I always get bothered by. I mean, uh, mods were so going at it even after the interview, like which I don't think was. The chats are just like spamming Silk Song over other people's trailers. Really needed, so, especially when we were talking about Crow Sworn. I really didn't want the chat to be like only obsessing over. Like I, I want, I want the Crow Sworn death. Like obviously, we're we're uh, we're the Hollow Knight community, right? We're excited about Silk Song, like as the number right, one right. thing. Uh, but I, I don't want. I don't want them to feel overshadowed, you know, because they aren't. And their game is really exciting in its own, like, like by reading? itself. Not because it's, like, somehow related to Hollow Knight. It, it stands on its own uh, two No one's feet really and online. lies on its own two crow wings. Um, I'm going to raid Blue SR. So, yeah, if, you, if you're frustrated with the way we handle chat, that's my fault, not my mods. Uh, they were only enforcing what I told them to do. Uh, and they did a pretty good job, I feel like. Uh, All right, so guys. If, you're, if, if the follower only, for watching. sub only, whatever uh, it, it was at certain points uh, bothered you, then my fault. Uh, Gubra, I wouldn't take that literally. Um, I wouldn't take that literally. What I it might? That's like, I, I wouldn't say that's like an official... Okay. confirmation that news will be coming directly for team cherry does that make sense i think it was more like this is the way how i'm right. thinking about it right now and then obviously i'll see y'all later in the future anything On you know Monday. said now could change or maybe later today i don't know um anyway i don't know i think we should